What do you think of that? Hey, what do you think of that tonight? That's an absolute disgrace. That's the worst team performance I've seen in years and years, especially in Europe. I was watching today uh, the Barcelona game at Anfield. Couldn't believe what we uh, what I witnessed. I couldn't believe what I witnessed there tonight. And I'd like your comments. I'd like your comments. I really would. Enzo. Kelleher. Kelleher made a couple of good saves. Could have been five. Could have been six. Van Dijk and Canetti. Terrible. Samikas. Joe. Joe Gomez. The lot of them. The lot of them were awful. Midfield, shocking. At the beginning, I seen that team. I seen that team. And I said the other night, you can't have too many changes. You've got to play a strong side. Because Atalanta are not a bad set. Well, played to tonight. Too. I'll just go through these before I bring uh, the lads on. K Mac. Well, that's for English teams out the Europa. And that's TW says, is it not two legs, K Mac? The Anfield Raw. Good evening, Frankie Boy, and all the Frankie Frankie lights. After that piss poor show, and let's all do it. Yeah. Yeah. Redbird. It's not impossible, but I can't I can't see us turning this over at their place. Yeah, at Bergamo. I feel for the fans who have accommodation booked in Dublin and a few have so I, I know a few. I was going over, I had um, a couple of Irish friends and they said it last year. They said it last year, if we if we if we get to Dublin, you're staying at my place. You know, two of them, both places. So he has a choice. I'd like you to say, where's this fucking thing gone? Where's, where, 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 where's it gone? I'm, I'm sure there's, there's somebody... Come over there. Come here. Oh, Jesus Christ. We'll beat them 5-0. We beat them 5-0 away four years ago. It's unlikely, but never say never, lads. Yes, says Chris. Bad attitudes. Yeah. I'd go along with that. I'd go along with that. And um, the Scottish Bay... Even if Frank Liverpool looked scared today, they did. I, I, I don't understand it. Worst pile of uh, crap I've seen in Anfield, says the Anfield. All of them want to start, but they don't, do you Keller uh, made a couple of bad saves also. Klopp got it wrong, full stop. Red Bears, it was terrible, Frank. They were all garbage. He should have brought up he should have brought brought on Jota at half time. Yeah, go go with you there. Can you send us a link, mate? I'll I'll get hold of um K, uh, JK is in here. He sends the links. Give me give me uh, give me a few minutes, please. K Mark, give me a few minutes. Please give me a few minutes. I'll get hold of uh, Jason. I'll get hold of Jason. Chris Dix. Oh, blimey. Atalanta have been erratic in Syria. I know they have, but seem to play well in the big games. Couldn't hear the cop on TV, though. No one could hear them. 
very true, she's um, we wrote her head uh, being terrible, that is. Didn't see the match, Frank says Dorothy. Listens on five live just as Salah scored. I can't believe the scoreline. Look at the possession stats and Liverpool appear to be on top. What happened? Jota, Salah, Arnold on the bench. Yep. Yep. Just let me go through these, lads. I'll bring you on. We're not going to Dublin, Frank. Very poor. As said, Mr. Klopp's fault says poor. Paul Baker uh, messaged me, before, you know, right at the end. And I agreed with him. I agreed with Paul. He's in work at the moment. The players should forfeit their wages this week. It's mobile forfeiting. Dorothy, Frank, you better have a drop of whiskey and keep calm, lad. At the beginning, I get a phone call of a friend of mine who doesn't like football. And, uh, you know, I'll let him in. I said, listen, I said, I'm watching the game, you know. Now, this is before. Uh, he said, oh, I'll be well gone. This is at fucking six o'clock. Oh, I'll be well gone. He's a cracking lad. Don't get me wrong. And he does me favours. And he fucking sat there. And I said, I thought you were going. And he gets a phone call off his uh, sister or someone and said, can you pick me up? I finish it half nine. And he fucking sat there through the match. And I went, I told you, ever ring me again. If we were playing off a, a, a match that night, don't ever. I said, you're unlucky for me. This is when we went 2-0 down. I said, you're unlucky. He said, oh, no, I'm not. I said, fucking hell. So I blamed him. <laughs> he went to 10, 5 to 10. I blame in the, the club for not allowing flags, says Redbird. That's what's, that's what's going to get the, you know, the players don't play with flags. I understand what you're saying. I understand that. Liverpool can't play the slow builds up against teams that press. They are far too predictable and can and can be easily to play against. Yes, you're right there, Scottish Bear. Hey, to say it, but we're only ending up with the caribou, says Yusa. Well, if we play like that, yeah. I can't, I can't make D, uh, 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 Darwin out. When it was nil-nil, he missed a glaring fucking chance again. A glaring chance. How many chances has this fella got, got to miss? Before someone says, all right, lad, you know, sit down. You, 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 we, we, you'll come on when we when we say. And I've always said about uh, Elliot, Elliot's better coming off the bench rather than starting. I've always said that. Always said. Chris says, uh, too many changes in defence. No taking players is necessary, but I don't like defensive units being... Joe Gomez was absolutely useless. Awful. And he dropped young uh, Bradley for him. The only positive is Jota is back in, uh, in contention. Says near brother. Frank, we're too passive. Mate, we got what we deserve, says Peter Dave Davis. It's Klopp and the players' fault. They are all to blame. Yes. Frank, how good have Atalanta been? They've been good, but, you know, they're, they're fighting for their, their Champions League spot. There are no mugs. Albeit that they got beat by uh, at Bologna at the weekend. And they're like more or less bottom of their league. Serie A. I'm gutters. I don't know what to say. Everyone already said it. I'm spot on, people. A lot of you say uh, Gary. And uh, Gary Rigby, that is. Anfield Road. Batatich. 
gonna play five seconds in last game of the season apparently when he when he is ready there lad you sit on the bench you've done so well growing Fucking hell. i know this is just fucking ridiculous i'm going to bring on uh, the lads now let's see who we have uh, norman <laughs> frankie angry i love it i'm feels i'm more than angry i'm more than angry i sat with a fucking fella who doesn't go the game doesn't like football and he sat there because he had to pick his fucking sister up i should have lashed him at half time i should have lashed him but he's a nice man he, he's a nice fella he's a, a ex-colleague of mine he's still working you know he's still lecture them like fuming i am fuming I'm going to bring our lads in and I've got to bring this fella in here. He's the boy. I'm going to add him right now. Jamie, come on. I want the rant, mate. I really want the rant. Oh, I don't know. I've got any energy to rant. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was trash, wasn't it? It, it was, it was a mixture of the players letting Jurgen down and, Jurgen's tactics the last couple of games as well. It's just everything seems uh, everything seems a bit weird. I don't I don't get why Bradley was dropped. I don't understand that. I don't get why Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott were taken off at half time. I don't understand why Darwin Nunes still is our number one striker. He misses too many chances. The fan base. What did you think of the first one, there? Uh, honestly, Jamie, it, it was pathetic. That's that's just look. That's that, that's that straight here. If that was a striker playing for one of our rivals, we'd laugh. Yeah, we? let's be fair. Yeah. Here. Yeah. It was a pathetic finish. It was pathetic. So, it, it, but the the thing about it all, though, we look really tired, and that's a worry. We look fatigued. There was no energy, no energy. Um, the fans, I thought Anfield was quiet all day. I had to turn my telly up to up seventy percent to see if there was any noise coming through. It was so quiet for a European game. I think that protest ruined the game, in my opinion. A few uh, people have said that. Atmosphere. I think it ruined the atmosphere. I've never seen a European game in a quarterfinal like that for atmosphere. I no. think it ru completely ruined the atmosphere. Um, and the players, they were just everything looks flat. I've never seen that. It's the worst European performance I've seen us put in under Jurgen Klopp since Napoli when we got battered 4 0. <laughs> that that is literally the worst. And I'd say it's something. Uh, it, I, 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 Darwin Nunes has got to stop being our number nine. Jot is fit now. Jot just has to play number nine till the end of the season. And yeah. Darwin can be an impact substitute. I, I, yeah. I like the guy. I, I rate the guy. He never stops. He always gives. He don't cower away or anything like that, like a lot of other players sometimes do. So I give him credit for all that stuff. But these misses now are coming to hurt us, guys. It really is. They're coming to hurt us. Jota today would have gone around the goalkeeper and put that in. I, 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 but there was... It, 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 it's I, becoming just like don't that understand now. Just don't understand like that. Honestly, don't understand them. Lee, what, what, what's your uh, take? I saw this one coming. If I'm honest, I didn't think... I, I thought I saw this one coming. And um, just so with the United game, we haven't been playing well for weeks. We only used to to scrape past Sheffield, you bloody United, didn't we? When I seen you last, Frank. And yeah, um, if We haven't been playing well for weeks. We look listless. We look predictable. Remember what Ancelotti said about us after Paris? He said they were predictable. I'm, I was angry that he said that, but he was telling the bloody truth, mate. We are predictable now. And I think this thing about Jürgen leaving, it galvanised them at first when they first found out, but I think it's causing problems now. And I, I, think, I said that. I think, like Yusuf said, we're going to end up with the Carabao unless we can pull something out the bag and Arsenal drop a few points but the, the way it's going Arsenal are going to have to drop more than two points mate for us to bag the title and City are going to have to drop points as well 
Well, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I'll, go, I'll go to Daryl on this. Uh, what 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 Norman says? Three points from me. Uh, three points from me. Arrogance from our support. And constantly saying we're going to Dublin. Arrogant from crop and sides he started with. And arrogance from the team. Crowds were a joke. What do you think of that, Daryl? And I'm going to ask the same as well to, uh, to Jamie. Yeah, I was going to say it. I was say it when I first come on. I don't know where what happened. This is a quarterfinal of a massive competition. The crowd were just so dead. You, I literally, I couldn't believe it. What I was, what I was, what I was hearing from that at the end. It, it was just prophetic. There was nothing there at all tonight. It was players that were playing tonight. I really hope they're not at the club in the summer, especially Costa Simicas. Oh my God. I have no word for that guy. Shocking. What about you, Jamie? What about you with this comments here, you know, on those three points? You know, yeah. about the crowds and, you know, the arrogance. I think the fan thing, so I've been saying we should get a Dublin, so I suppose I've been a bit arrogant, but I'm also a content creator, so I've got to be like that. But um, I, I, I would say... The crowd, look, the crowd, I don't like swearing on your channel. I swear on my channel because I'm young. But, but... No, go ahead, swear, swear. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but the, the crowd really pissed me off today. I, I just, it it killed, it. I love what Spirit of Shankly are doing for Liverpool behind the scenes, you know, freezing the away tickets of 30 quid and stuff like that. And, you know, what they did with a £77 ticket increase and stopped that. They've done marvellous things for our football club. I just think they picked the wrong day and time for this. For this, it's a quarter final, exactly, and it could possibly be Jurgen Klopp's last European night at Anfield. Exactly. I, I just feel, and Klopp loves atmosphere. What does Klopp love? He loves atmosphere in the stadium because he calls it yeah. the twelfth man. When we're going down, when we're not feeling great, the crowd always picks us up. Always tonight, they just didn't have it in them. And people might say, "What well, taking flags and banners away just ruined your atmosphere?" It's when you're going to a stadium, you're geared up, ain't you? You're like, oh, I can't wait to get in there. I can't wait to get in there and stuff. Yeah. And then they come to you, right, we're taking all that shit away from you. Can't use that yeah. tonight. And like, why? And then you just like, oh. you know what I mean? And you see, it, it, it ruins you. Crazy? Yeah, it ruins you. And then, and then like, uh, the team, I, I'm going to go say, Lee said, I think the team, I, I, I think the boys, look, they look lethargic. They look tired. If you go back to the Sheffield United game, it took a world-class goal from McAllister to pretty much win us that game of football. Um, and we look extremely tired right now. And it's going, it might be a slog now until the end of the season. It really might because that team was flat. There was no no energy in that team. Even Virgil a day. Virgil running back, jogging back, and then just got the ball taken off him. When yeah. do you ever see that happen? Never. He looked tired and beat up. I just you, feel like look, there, look at this. Look, look, look. You've only got to look at this. Yeah, that's atmosphere. That's what Liverpool's known for. Especially in European nights, and it was taken away tonight. I just feel like I understand Spirit of Shankly's uh what they're doing. I uh, credit them for what they're doing. Don't speak but, for me. You just, I've said it but, for years. You don't speak for me. Pick your battles and pick your time for your battles. Tonight weren't your time to battle that. Do it in the boardroom. Do it in the boardroom. Don't do it. It just ruined everything tonight. As I said on my show the other day, like there would have been play, there would have been fans going today that might have not have gone to Anfield for a year or two, and were gearing up for a European night. And then it's not the European nights you know, no. and it's just it takes a little bit out of you. It really does. If I was driving from South down up to Liverpool tonight for that game, gearing up for it, and then getting there, no, oh. Yeah, all that magical thing that makes Anfield so amazing on European nights is not there. Then immediately you feel a bit, uh, you know, don't you? you feel a bit like, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, 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 it's irritating. Let's be brutally honest. That is Jürgen's last Anfield European game. Yeah, we're we we we're we're 4 0 in Italy. We ain't coming back from <laughs> this, not in Italy. No. No, no, we're not. Not the way we're playing now. There's not going to be a massive turnover in, in time for the second leg. We're out, mate. 
And that's all there is. To it. And I don't think we can afford to go full strength in Italy either with the Premier League uh, way it is. Exactly. See, I would have gone. See, this is where I think we've got, I think Klopp got his team wrong tonight. I would have gone. I would have gone full strength tonight. Try and get the game won, even if it's a one nil, and then maybe rotating the second leg. Not. I think he just got it a little bit wrong because I think he sort of like, you know, underappreciated Atalanta's chances of winning today with the team he picked. So I'm not going to blame him for everything because the players, the players messed up on the pitch at the same time. But I think in games like this, you can analyse it like players messed up because they should have done better, taken their chances, defended better. Oh, but at the same time, you can look at the manager as well. I, I think games like this, you could, it's a fair 50-50 look at everything in this game, to everyone to blame. It's not just one person or one thing, in my opinion. It's a bit of, it's a it's a it's a group effort. You know, when it's a group effort when you win, it's a group effort when you lose, in my opinion. Well, Steve McManaman says, you know, and he went back to the old players, he said they, they you know, when Nunes had that uh, thing, he said they was just going around the goalkeeper and put it in the empty net. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you would have. You would have. Absolutely ridiculous. I'll just go through a couple of comments. Uh, Dorothy says, uh, Nunes lacks composure in front of goal. I know he scores a few, but he's missed a few as well. And the Anfield Raw, Frank, so true, Nunes. Worst taker of goals I've seen has only, has only scored so many because we create so much. I'm not on so No, we're not, we're not saying that. Atalanta gave us chase. Jeff Allison gave us a bit of a football lesson tonight and probably too much to do in the away game, to put it mildly. I do think Klopp should take responsibility for this one, though. And their manager completely outsmarted Jürgen tonight. I believe that you start the game with your best team. It's just what you said there, Jamie. I don't understand that starting eleven at all. Neither do I. Neither do I, Jeff. I really didn't understand. And uh, Can you get a K Mac on? Yeah, I've just sent him the link. Oh, brilliant. 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 No, everything's, everything's gone tits up the last few weeks, hasn't it? Like we just we we look like lethargic, listless. Um, we've got ideas, we, we, but like they're not the right ideas. We're not getting the final ball. That's been the same for weeks now. We keep getting in in three on one situations and not scoring. It's happening week after week after week. Um, and to be honest, it doesn't look likely that we'll get the league. Even now, it looks like all we'll end up with is the Carabao. And just to compound our misery, it'll probably be Chelsea Man United in the FA Cup final, and Man United will probably bloody win. There are some things here. There are some uh, like um, my mate was there tonight, and he was fuming. I I, I I can't read his help, but I'll show you what he said. Uh, right, Scottish Bear Frank. We lads have watched Liverpool for years. It's bonkers that Liverpool is rotating centre-backs. Stop that nonsense. We need continuity in defence. Absolutely. Now, I'll just put this up. I really can't read it out. I really can't, um, you know. And that's what... And he's, he, he's done the game every season. I mean, you know, every game... He doesn't miss games. He's fuming. Should have heard him on the phone to me. We were awful. And Atalanta didn't need to be that good. That's a cracking comment. That's a cracking comment by Mikey Lees. And you're nodding your head there, Kay. Evening, guys. Hey, Kev. You're nodding your head with uh, what Mikey Lee said there, Kay, Mark. I mean... Well, it was like one minute forty, and Keller pulls off a save with his with his eye yeah. to stop the ball from going in the net, which would have been one nil down in the first what under two minutes of the game. Huh? It's it's all about the attitude. We're it's all about attitudes. Also, aren't we every week? 
It's all about attitudes. It's like we we have a habit of doing this. We have a habit of throwing away opportunities that are there for us to take every single time under Jurgen Klopp. We do. I'm sorry. Like we threw away the Manchester United game, 27 shots, couldn't put the ball in the in the onion bag again. Nunes, just a stinky, stinky forward. Like he just cannot finish his dinner. Like go round the goalkeeper. Like hit the hit the goalkeeper. At least you were hitting the goalkeeper before. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm I'm sorry, guys, but this this falls. This falls at the manager's feet again. It just does. Like, why are you taking Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones on, who are the only people that are controlling the game? The only people. Like, you just have to look at the numbers. Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones are the number one runners in the team. Every single game. They run more than anybody else. They put more effort in. And you took them off. And you keep Gapco on. Please tell me what Gapco does. I mean, he can have a few tricks and flicks in the middle of the park, but he's supposed to be a striker. Like, why aren't you? Why aren't you near the goal? You're never near the goal. <laughs> like... Well, you agree with that one for your row. Does anyone know what Gapco did? No. No. Everyone said he had a great game. He didn't have a shot. He didn't have a shot on goal, and he didn't create anything for anybody. All his passes were wayward. He, he he looked he looked like he was he looked like he was playing at a speed that was too fast for him, and everything was bouncing off him, or everything was like just miscontrolled. Like, I, I, like, I'm sorry, like, but we're going to win nothing this season now because the attitude stinks. The attitude stinks. Like the manager is literally disrespecting. Gasparini in his press conference like he gave him his team talk like he literally said that he should retire like him <laughs> like you should quit football like me like like you can joke all about the fact that the guy's been at the club like nine years but what Gasparini's done with Atalanta has been incredible it has been like, incredible and and we and, and I think we have I think we have I think we have memories that we've lost Atalanta beat us at Anfield before yeah and you play, and you play a guy that you won't even play against Sheffield United in Costa Simicas. You can tell straight from the start, Virgil Van Dijk does not like playing with him because Virgil Van Dijk looked pissed off from the start. Like, why? Why have I got this guy next to me? Like, what am I supposed to do with this guy here to the left? Like, like you've got Gomez. He's playing out of his skin as a left back, and you and you stop playing him as a left back. Like make that make sense to me. Like ever since Gomez stopped playing as a left back, we don't look great anymore, and that's just the fact. Like, well, when games, I seen the team, when I seen the team and six changes. Now I said on the pod the other night, we shouldn't be, we, we we shouldn't make too many changes. We've got to play a good strength side, and he left the forwards off. He left the forwards up. Nunes isn't scoring. That's what got me. Nunes isn't scoring. And McAllister, I don't know whether if you know, but no one was helping him. And he kept the ball get kept off him, you know, taken off him, away from him. And I've never seen so many passbacks in all my life. Like, and so many booted forwards. Like the tactics were long ball from the goalkeeper. Are you having a laugh? Yeah, it was, I seen that, you know, the second half. Was it the second or the first half? I don't know now. You see, no, it was the first half. You see, um, uh, Canetta, he gets the ball, you know, mid half, hard half, and runs with it, makes a cracking run, and he turns it down, passes it back into our own half, having, having been running up to their half. And it ends back with a Kelly. I, I, I didn't understand any of that football. I just didn't understand it. I was fuming. I was fuming. And as you said, uh, Jamie, you know, the crowd, 
there, there was nothing. There was absolutely... Do you think? Here's what I was thinking. We're going to get... My daughter phoned me up. She said, Dad, is that right? We're getting beat. I said, yes, she's in the bloody theatre. I said, we're awful. I said, we're going to get beat tonight. I could see it. Yeah. I could see it. Jamie... Yeah. I felt this one coming, like I just had a feeling we'd get beat tonight. I didn't think it'd be 3 0, like, but I felt we'd get beat tonight. But losing 3 0, it's over. I don't want to be negative when people are saying it's only half time, but we're not going there and we're in 4 0. It just ain't happening, mate. It ain't going to happen. All right, we did that turn around with Barca, but that's a different kettle of fish. Barca are like the Spanish team and they were like the best more or less the best team in Europe at the time, so they weren't going to sit back or not, and Atlanta will just sit back and, and they'll pick us off. They'll need to score while they're finished. Uh, uh, Atlanta are really good at home, by the way. They won, they won seven in their last eight games at home. We're really good at, we're really good at home as well. They've got a fortress. 3-0. <laughs> like, 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 I'm not, like, I'm not being... That's the only golfers, isn't it? Like, I'm not, I'm not being funny, guys, but Salah makes that 2-1. Just stay on side. Like, it's not hard. You can see the line. He got it's a pushed really offside. Good move. He did get pushed offside. He was onside. It's a really he was good pushed. Move. pushed. Yeah, he got pushed offside. That's happened twice this season on Sally. Being it, pushed on, uh, offside. It, it's stronger. This Sorry. is such a this is such a weird game to analyse. Like, it, it, it's just Liverpool have been like this for a few weeks now. They got. They, they they need players back. They need to get Darwin out. I don't want to see Darwin playing for Liverpool again, in my opinion. He should be sold in the summer. I just don't know what Darwin's going to get Liverpool. I, I, I don't know what Darwin... He's twenty. He's almost 25. We can't act like Darwin's 20, like in a Harvey Elliott, and he's still got loads to learn in the game. He's 25 years of age. Yeah, I, I, he's never going to be a clinical finisher, and he's their number nine. The chances we create, uh, look, I said it yesterday. Chris Wood has got more Premier League goals for Nottingham Forest than uh, than Darwin Nunes has for Liverpool. Right? Can you imagine if Chris Wood played tonight? We've probably scored that goal. This is if, but we can't have these conversations because there's too many people in the fan base that have got a massive erection for Darwin Nunes, and you're not allowed to talk about it. Yeah, you're just not allowed to talk about it because they all love. It's just, he runs around, he looks good, yeah, he puts in an effort. That's all great. I'm, I love all that about him as well. But at the end of the day, did, guys, didn't we buy him because he's a striker and puts the ball in the back of the net? Ain't that the point of his signature? At the moment, he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. The Norman says there, Jamie. And I, I, I think it's what you're saying. Nunes was cocky with finish, trying to be clever. And he just says, that's my opinion. I think it's everybody's opinion. And he smiles about it, you know, when he was here. That, that infuriates me. Yeah. It infuriates me. Look, I, look I, I, I've said this before. Uh, look, since Edwards left, I don't think I don't think we've signed anyone that's top that's top quality. I don't think any of the players we've signed since Edwards left have been any good, like, to the level that they should be. Like, they've all got flaws in their game. They're all work in progresses. They're all they're all good. They're all good sometimes, and not the other. Like you know, I'm sorry, like, but we are going to start to see the cracks in Endo as well, because Endo can't do it all on his own. And and for me, I have no idea what Dominic Sabolsai does now. Like I, I don't know where he plays. I don't think he knows where he plays. Like is he is he in midfield? Is he an attacking midfield? Is he a winger? Like at the moment, he, he's nothing. And all he does is gives the ball away and, and pisses me off really, really a lot because he's got so much more to give. And, and I'm sorry, like, but it's just unforgivable the amount of effort that was put in when we went 2-0 down. People were walking around, like, jogging back. Like, like this is, the, this is a quarter final. Like, we've got an easy run to the final. Like, why do we do this all the time? Do you know? Why do, do we you make know, this so difficult for easy games? Do you know the only good thing about oh. Liverpool go out? Do you know the only good thing about Liverpool go out? 
that England we, might not get a, England might not get a top five Champions League spot. I know. United I was thinking of that. You know, you know, yeah. it definitely won't play Champions League next season. So that would be, that'd be um, that's, that's and and it, and it would make and it would make um, Aston Villa and Tottenham play yeah. stronger teams against City and um, yeah. Arsenal. But, but yeah. we're relying on other teams to help us. Mm. Like we should just help ourselves because Atalanta on a great team. They got beat by Calgary. It was it was crap. Ain't they like sixth two in the, one? The weekend. Ain't they sixth? Ain't they sixth in their league as well? Yeah, they didn't. Can we talk about the goal, their goals? Can we talk about their oh, goals? We need, we, we, we need that West Ham reject, don't we, to score for us? <laughs> well, that, that's what I mean, score for that. But I mean, what no, about four. their goals? Their three goals, and it could have been a lot more, by the way. What do you think of their three goals? Keller was at fault for the first. He was at fault for three. Well, the, the first. Uh, let's talk oh. about the first one. It went, it went uh, through him. Sorry, yeah, the first one. The, the first one was his fault. I will say though, we have no defensive structure at all. We are oh. so easy to play against. I've said this all season. I will keep saying it. Yeah, we are. Know. We are the easiest big team, apart from Man United, obviously. We are the easiest big team to play against in the Premier League. We just give chances for fun. The other day, it was one all against Sheffield United. Sheffield United make a sub and try to go for it. Sheffield United wouldn't do that against any other big team. All right? We are easy to play against. Our defensive structure is terrible. The problem is, Klopp wants to play a pressing game because that's his tactics, that's his system, and I'm all for it. And when it works, I've always said it's amazing. But the the players that we've bought in the last two years doesn't suit that system. It, it don't suit a pressing system like that. You know, Gakpo, he don't, no. You know, uh, Darwin, no. Uh, Sabozlom, no. Um, you know, these players don't suit a pressing game. And, you know, we've got McAllister, who don't really want to press. He's, a, he's the IQ man in your midfield. He's the intelligence in your midfield. He doesn't really want to press. He wants to get hold of the ball and make things happen. That's part of his game. So when you want to play a pressing game still and you want to play high intensity and you haven't got players that can do that, you're going to struggle defensively. And then if you've seen all season, we struggle defensively because of it. Yeah. It's, just, it's not in our makeup defense. Apart from Virgil and Canate, who actually looks like they want to defend in our team? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, police are, the police have put an APB out for our defence so they can find them. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Lee, stay with you here. And, you know, just go around. And it's Norman. I've got to say, I remember Jamie saying Nunes missing chances will eventually cost us. He said that in January and he's just been proved right. I've, I've said it a lot about Darwin. I, I, I've always said two things about Darwin. But why can't we say anything about him? Because you get lambasted if you say I anything. Know. And this is what I say. Look, every time I say about Darwin, he will never be an elite finisher. It's as simple as that. He'll never be an elite finisher. But the problem is he has to start in our team because if he doesn't start, we have zero pace up front. Yeah. Like zero. And if we want to play that high press and quick counters, you have to have pace in your forward line. And if Darwin's not in it, he, so he has to play. For me, if I get Jota, uh, I'd play Darwin left wing. I'd play Jota through the middle. I'd play Mo through the right. Mo's playing like he wants to leave right now, in my opinion. I think Mo's done. I think his head's gone by the look of it. Um, we just need a clean slate next season. Next season's going to be so different. You know, it, it's going to be so different. It's going to be a shock to the system for a lot of people. But, yeah, I think we might be more boring to watch next season. But I think we'd be defensively uh, a lot better than we are right now because we're playing a way that... We're, well, we're playing a way... Look, them goals today that we conceded, do you know how embarrassing they are defensively for a team like Liverpool? Yeah. You know, I, I yeah, her letting the one go through him, yeah. But... Kelleher has saved us one on one, like Allison does quite a lot this season. Yeah. So if he's letting a few in, I can't blame yeah. him at the same time because he's just been left open. 
you know, it's just like opening the gates to a zombie apocalypse and going, yeah, you go on, lads, go and eat them all. It's all right, go, go, go. For it. You know, that's what, that's what we're doing. It's just... It's just mad. That's our defence, man. It's, a, it's an open gate, and we rely too much on Virgil Van Dyke. I, I, if Virgil Van Dyke weren't playing for us, I don't think we would have conceded like forty or fifty goals this season by now. Yeah, I totally agree. I really totally agree. And yeah, Virgil was awful tonight. So was Canetti. Yeah. Samitas was absolutely dreadful. And well, so he, needs, was, he needs to leave. <laughs> no, uh, he, I don't know where the, the hell he was playing. We've got he to stop playing inverted. We've got to stop this inverted crap. It doesn't exactly. work. Exactly. It does uh, oh, it does my head in. It does my head in. Joe, Joe Gomez should just be a fullback if he's playing fullback. I don't want to see him on the edge of our, the opposition box having 20 yard efforts anymore. He had three. I, I don't he even want to have. It's. I, uh, Trent never had three efforts at goal. I mean, yeah, three. It, it just... three thirty yarders, and they all went miles <laughs> over. I've never seen him target. Yeah, I've never seen well, Joe Gomez. No, target, yeah. The crowd is shouting shoot, like Joe Gomez could shout hit... shit. Joe Gomez, Joe Gomez couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it is. It's. It's that bad at the moment. He just. It, he's just. This inverted stuff, do you know how much this inverted stuff is costing us defensively when we lose the ball in the midfield? Go back and watch this game later. Every time we lose the ball in the midfield, Gomez is playing inverted, so they've got like 30 yards of space to run into and just obliterate us. But they were on their own. Goal scorers were on their own. Stuff exactly. by themselves. No one around them. No one Never made to block. Has Pete Kravitz it. left or something? What's happened to our analytics? Usually, like, when we have bad performance, Kravitz, he looks at it all, don't he? And he goes, yeah, this, this is no good. He's That's done, it. though. He's done. He's zoned out now, ain't he? He's leaving as well. He's zoned out. He's like, well, what's Klopp, 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 and yeah. he watched us loads, hadn't he? And I felt that's why I felt it was going to be a defeat tonight. I, I felt like he, he'll watch us loads and, and he'll know how to do us. And he, he, and went, he did. He went, man, he, he went man on, he went man on man. He went, yeah. he went man on man. We didn't, we didn't have any players that were that had any freedom. So, so as soon as, as soon as the ball came to us, we had to go long. And all you've I, got is Darwin Nunes, who, who I'm sorry. Isn't good in the air. He's not a good jumper. Like we have loads of tall players in midfield and attack that don't win the ball in the air, and they're over six foot. Graven Birch, Gapco, Nunes. None of them win the ball in the air. Like it's just ridiculous. Like how can you not jump when you're over six foot six foot two? Like use your strength. Like they just don't do it. Like we did nothing from set pieces today. Like, I'm not being funny. I looked at that team and I said it on your show, Jamie. They have got a really, really slow midfield. Edmondson and, and Timo Cooper Mayers are really slow. And their defenders looked overweight. Like, they looked fat. Like, Cooper Miners could have is a good player. Easily got around them. I like, like Cooper Miners. He's like, a good play player. the game. Like, play the game. Play the play the play round them. They're slow players. I'll tell you what, like. Klopp, Klopp got done. Klopp got done on his tactics. Klopp got done on his substitutions. Like, taking Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones off, who basically did everything in the first half but score. Like, Harvey Elliott at the crossbar, which would have gone in on a normal day, but it hit the inside of the post and came out, which was weird. I've never seen that, by the way. And then you've got Curtis Jones, who put put a, put a, a goal on a plate for Nunes to just round the goalkeeper. And, and he could have put it to the side of him because the goalie committed himself to the floor. Oh, the goalkeeper was crap. The goal, he, he was terrible. Was terrible. He was terrible. We never, like, we never, we never done anything. You know, he, 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 he took them off. Yeah, he was flat-footed. Like he was literally flat-footed the whole time. It was just, I, I, I don't understand why you bring Harvey and Curtis Jones off. I, 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 no I really idea. don't. I, no I, I was watching it. I think, yeah, Harvey Elliott was playing all right, in my opinion. Curtis was. Jones was playing all right. Curtis Jones played a beautiful ball to Darby Nunes that should have scored. Um, you know, D Harvey almost scored for that beautiful effort. Yeah, uh, so he it, nearly scored as well. It's yeah, it's just I don't know what I don't know why them two went off and this Sabozzi stuff in midfield has got to stop. Yeah, 
got to stop. He's a wing back. the lad I feel sorry for, boys. Uh, what Red Bird says. Taz Reynolds went tonight. He was so excited yesterday. That's why I we feel. lost. That's why we That's lost. Why. Daz, never go again. Yeah, play Daz. <laughs> no, um, Daz, never go again. It's your fault, mate. It's your fault. <laughs> it's your fault. You're a bad luck. But no, it, it's... Oh, uh, oh, I can't believe how bad we It's not much good to say. It's the, like, we're tr I'm trying to be no. positive here. I'm trying to think positive and say this is where things can change in the coming weeks, like in the running for the title, because we're out of Europe. Everyone knows that now. But I can't see where it's going to change. I think it's going to be a bit lame until the end of the season. I think we'll win a few games, but only a few, and that just won't be enough. Well, what do you and think that, of this? That's the uh, issue, well, Matt. I, I hate that. I hate that, Frank, because that is going to be an issue now, isn't it? It's going to be used yeah. as an excuse. I'm sorry. Well, it, well you know, excuse. Peter Davies got a right to comment. And it's there he says, good. FSG picked the wrong time to come out with the 2% ticket rise. It, it's, it's April. It's it's April, it's tax years when it has to come out, isn't it's it? It's a quid. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I understand also, that. It is the tax year, yeah. And also, it's a it's a pound on your ticket. Like, don't By the way, don't it's, buy a pie. it's been, it's a 2% increase in six years. So, it's, as I said, Arsenal are expecting to increase their tickets by 12%. So, it, it, we still have one of the cheapest standard tickets in the Premier League. It's just, and they froze the £9... Uh, local kids tickets as well so yeah it's, it, 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 I don't know it's just balmy everything is balmy at the moment Liverpool one thing I will say again after 50 games of a season because they pointed out today we played 50 games this season we look tired and lethargic again why do we always look so tired going towards the end of the seasons, but teams like Man City and Arsenal look fresh as daisies. I mean, I think I think after Klopp's reign, because Klopp has been brilliant, I always say this, it's the, the Bill Shankly of our generation. But I think we can look at things that sometimes go, why are our players always overcooked? Why are we always shattered? Sometimes change the playing style a little bit. Tonight, you could have seen they were going one-on-one -on -one defending. So drop back. Let Atalanta have the ball. If Atalanta have the ball for long possessions of time, they don't know what to do with it. That's not their game. So let them have the ball and then counter on them because they're not used to that. They're used to having the least possession, one-on-one -on -one defender over the pitch, get the ball back in high areas of the pitch and break. That's what Atalanta play like. So yeah. let them have the possession. They won't know what to do with it because they haven't got players that play that way. Now they can't keep the ball. And then Liverpool counter on them. But I don't know why we don't change things sometimes mid game. We we like the substitutions were made. Elliot and Elliot was taken off. Suppose I comes on. And you're asking, suppose I do what Elliot did, but suppose I can't do what Elliot does. You know, pressing and running. He can't do that. And yeah, I just don't everything's weird. As I said, I'm not gonna blame everything on the manager, the players have to take a look. 50% of the blame, the manager takes 50% of the blame. It was all one massive shit show. Well, I'll read out, to, 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 Tony, what you're saying. I'll read out two uh, comments. And it's Zane Hanif. I hope I've said that right here, uh, Hanif. Yeah, big at Zane. Uh, this is all pressure built up from missing chances, but the defending tonight was unacceptable. It's like we always have one player always playing someone on. Crack of that. Yep. And Redbird says, I want you to comment on these two comments, by the way. Klopp got his tactics badly wrong. Come on, well, boys. The tactics never really change because we play the same way and it usually wins. The same way. Yeah. But you've got to know when to... Uh, change, that, change that mid game. If you can't change it mid game, then, then you've got an issue. Um, but the players finishing today was terrible as well. You know, they give they're, they're not taking any chances, and then the defending, defending is just really, really, really poor. Use noise and stuff. Is that yours, Daryl? I'm gone. Go okay. Ahead. okay, okay, 
All right. What about you, uh, Lee? You know, th those two uh, comments, one by Zane Hanny, you know, missing chances and the defending, you know, this, you know, is unacceptable. And there's always one player playing someone on. There's mm. always well, one well, player. Well, the, the truth in both them um, comments, what Zane said about we're missing so many chances, it's building the pressure up, chance after chance after chance going by. It's building the pressure up on us or on the defence. And Klopp, he's been getting his tactics wrong for weeks. I felt we were playing good up until the Carabao Cup final, I'd say. And then after that, we've been cack. We've been cack for that since the Carabao Cup final. I haven't seen us play even like 65% of what we can since the Carabao Cup final. But we played well for 15 minutes. The last 15 minutes against Sheffield United. When we bought, beat them, uh, I was expecting that two nil down. I I really was expecting, you know, a little comeback. And when Mo scored down, he was offside. That was it. But I didn't think that they'd go on and score another easy chance. It was put on the plate for them. It was shocking. No one there. Absolutely no one there to take that lad on, and he just slid it. But, you know, every goal was a bad goal. It wasn't like Walesies or anything like that. They were shocking goals, little tap-ins, more or less. Mm. And, you and know a where terrible they all came mistake down. by Keller. You've got to bring in Keller. And as, uh, I wanted, uh, I, I wanted um, Ali in tonight. Yeah. I thought Ali was a got a game tonight. You know, bring him in, give him minutes, give him something. I'm not saying he was a safe the other two, but he would certainly have saved that one. The only the only thing I see now is um is this is this is a real kick in the teeth to us and hopefully this this wakes us up. Because you would have thought the Manchester United game would have done that, but it obviously hasn't. Um and you would have thought the Sheffield United game might have done that when we had McAllister mm -hmm. to like pull us out of the map pull us out of the mire with a Gerard goal. You know what I mean? With a Gerard performance. Um I'll tell you what guys, I can't wait I can't wait for the new manager now. I just can't wait. I'm just I'm fed up of seeing the same stuff happen over and over. Like we ain't great when when we're chasing anything. You know, we're not great when we're chasing the league. You know, we're not great when we're expected to win games comfortably. We're just not. We we never do it. Like, you know, he played another team which shouldn't have played a pressure cooker game like that. Like, put the game to bed. Play all your best players. Like, play all your best players against Man United away because if we win, we go two points clear. But you don't. You play some of your kids. And then you play Kostas Simakas, who hasn't played all season. You know, everything came down the left. I'm sorry, guys. Like, I'm sorry, but I will say it over and over again. Common denominator is Robbo. Robbo came back. We've been crap. <laughs> Robbo came back. We've been seeing yeah. goals. I have sorry. To say, I'm losing faith in Ibu in terms of fitness because he's, he's hardly ever on the pitch. He's a great centre half when he's fit, but when is he fit? All right, he played tonight, but I knew he wouldn't play at Old Trafford. He came back, didn't he, in the uh, Sheffield United game and got a little knock, a little kick. He played till the end. But I said, I was, I was in Franks watching it and I said, he won't play at Old Trafford. And he bloody yeah, did. Why are you playing him? Why are you playing Ibu against Sheffield United? Like, I'm, telling, I'm telling you now, why boys. You Endo? Why are you playing Endo against Sheffield United? Why are you playing all your best players against a dead rubber team that you're winning 5 1 in the previous game? Absolutely. And then you drop some of them for this game. That's yeah. nil nil. Like it falls on Klopp. It falls on Klopp again. Like he's he's gonna taint his legacy at Liverpool. If he blows this league and this cup, he's gonna taint his legacy. Don't care what anyone says. I'm gonna be sitting there going, Yeah, you should have gone last season, mate. It should have gone what last you, season. What was you going to say, Dallo? I was just gonna say, I can't I don't I don't actually think we've been that good at all this year. When are we blown teams apart like we normally do? 
When have you seen that, apart from playing a one good half against Man City this year? That's it, for me. I think injuries come into the equation. I know I, I know it's came into the equation, Fred, but I just... Michael Edwards is going to be ruthless in the summer, I'm telling you, and I don't think that's going to be... that. What we've seen tonight, there ain't going to be many of them there. I don't think. Oh yeah, look at look at this. Would anyone agree with this Scottish player? I'm a prof I'm a former professional boxer. I had a few coaches. I feel in sports you are a reflection of your coach. Would anyone uh, comment on that? Yeah. Everyone, everyone says it all the time. Yeah, um, Liverpool playing Klopp's. You know. You know, it's we mirror what Jurgen Klopp wants us to do. So it is correct. You know, you are. That's why all teams play differently because they got different managers and different coaches with different ways of playing. Look at Atlanta. Atlanta were dog turd before Gasparini turned up, and now he makes them a better side than they actually are, consistently for eight years, whatever it's been. You know, and. Because they play under the way their manager wants them to play, and we play under the way our manager wants us to play. High press, you know, you know, high up, high press, counter pressing, uh, and a quick counter attacks in transition. That's the way we play. So defensively, we have to. We always leave. We leave things in behind. Liverpool. I won't go back to days where Liverpool can win a game one nil. Liverpool cannot win a game 1 0, can we? Can you imagine no. if, it, if it's 1 0 on the 85th minute mark? How much of our arses are squeaking? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, cause, yeah. cause we Cause know we've got everyone in their half. Yeah, exactly. The we're chasing the second goal. We can't control games defensively like that. You look at Arsenal, Arsenal can control games defensively, but still score 100 goals a season. Now, City can control games defensively at times. Less this season, but in previous years under Pep, they control games defensively. But Arsenal, their greatest, their best attackers the world have ever seen, never conceded chances. You know, that you can play in a way that's so eye-catching and beautiful to watch, but you don't have to be so risky at the back all the time. And I just feel like the last two or three years, Liverpool have never really sorted out how we play defensively. But because we've got so much class in our team, our individual quality comes shining through and we can win games like 3-1 and 4-2 and 4-3 and 3-1, 3-2 and stuff like that because we've got so much class going forward. But it should always be that way. And I think that's why we get tired because we come back from defeat a lot. Um, we we can be winning 2-0 with 10 minutes to go and it's like 2-1 and we got to go again because they're going to score another one in the second, and and that's why I think we're out of this Europa League because do you know how much effort it's going to take the boys to try and win four 0 in Italy next week. This is done down with. And, 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 um, it'll be so much effort the boys will have to put in. They might do it. It wouldn't shock me next week if the boys actually won four 0 in Italy. It wouldn't shock me at all. But they had to put so much energy into it. Our next league game away to Fulham, I wouldn't be surprised if we got beat. Yeah. So this is, where, this, is where Klopp, this is where Klopp's got to work it out now. Yeah. Well, Liam McHale says he's just back from a match that was hard to watch tonight. Atalanta man marked us out of the game totally and physically. Three nil down, but we are not out. We can hit back in this in the away leg. leg. Now, I just want to. Uh, Alfie Lord and he's mentioning the uh, nightly LFC here. Uh, and he mentions nightly about the smirking of Nunes when he misses chances. And he, 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 he you know, and the answer's there. He said, I hate that sin. Always smirking like it's a big joke. He's fucked up. I want him gone. But part costly misser of chances. So, you know, the, the, and Norman, you know, and I think what you're saying there, lads, Enzo and McAllister are shattered. Would you agree, anyone? Yeah. 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 The thing is, though, they, they shouldn't be shattered, though. <laughs> right? This is the one thing I'll say. Arsenal barely rotate. I know. 
No. Declan, Declan, Declan Rice has played every minute of every game this season. Yeah. Gabriel, 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 and um, Saliba. Saliba never get rotated. Ben and White never get rotated. Every week, but, but they're ne but they're never shattered. They're never tired. Has Odegaard ever missed a game? Only through injury. Like, but they're never tired. Saka like, has played for three years straight. Never tired. Don't just tell everyone it's the style of way we play. It's just too. The way we play is just too energy zapping. You need, and you for Klopp to be successful like a Pep, I think he would need. He needs like a squad of forty. He needs a squad of forty, all similar class players, and he would be. He would have the record Pep Guardiola's had in his manual career with trophy after trophy after trophy. But Klopp needs that massive rotation in players because the way he plays is so energy zapping, takes it so out of you. Them two years when we won the Champions League and Premier League back to back, that is them players at their absolute fittest. They couldn't get, I think Klopp even mentioned it, them players couldn't get any fitter than they actually were. And they never got injured in that two years. And they're at the peak of their performance. And then after that, their performances started going that way because they couldn't go any higher. And then we never built the squad, we never built the squad up from there, which is other people's fault. But that that and now we see the problem we are at now. These players are shattered. Why do we swap our centre backs all the time? I don't get that. I Nobody we does are one. It. Nobody you, does it. Your centre back pairing should play every week unless they're injured. There's no because yeah. they. That's what wins you games. I just I, I, I don't get it. I don't know why Endo and McAllister are tired. They shouldn't be. I think the central offs is it's the one position on the pitch when everyone knows you've got to try and keep the same, you know, the same pairing all the time. And let's be honest, centre back's the one position on the pitch where you do the least running. It's the same. It's the same every season as well. Our defence causes causes issues every single season. It's happening every year. The, the issue I've got is, and and I don't know whether you've seen it, but. When um, when we were two nil down, we had we had two at the back. Like, like we didn't have we didn't have yeah, a Gomez, left back or a right back. Gomez was inverting; he was somewhere having. We a didn't have a left shot. back or right back. I didn't even know whether we brought Robbo on. Like I thought, I thought we took Costas off, and we were playing Virgil Van Dijk and Canate at the back, and that was it. Because I was looking at the off. team, going, "Have we actually made yeah. a?" So have we have we took Costas off and we haven't brought anyone on to replace him, like in his position? And I was like, that's nuts. We're two 0 down. Like I understand going for it, but all we need to do is get a goal, and then we're back in it. Like if we took a two one to there, it's just really naive. I'm sorry, it's really naive and it's really stupid. And for me, we've completely thrown it away. And I I genuinely don't want us to go there and try and win that four nil. Because I'd rather I'd rather we concentrated on the Fulham game. Like I tell you, I tell you what, but I just that... I just do not get playing a weaker side for that game when you've got all your big hitters back. You got all your big hitters. Like, yeah, it, it it I don't get why Canati was rested for Man United but played today. I don't. I don't no get, one knows. I don't get, no one knows. I don't, knows. Get, why that I don't get that one. I don't get that one. I mean, Conor Gallagher, uh, Conor Gallagher, Jesus Christ, uh, Conor Bradley should. I don't know why Conor Bradley didn't play. It would have been perfect in this game. I said that. I, I said that when I seen the team. Yeah. Uh, I, I said, I said, what has he got Joe Gomez there for? Bradley's the man. I, I, I just feel That's like. Do you know what it feels like? You know when you have a great rock and roll band, yeah, they're the greatest rock and roll band in the world, right? But they're just getting sick and tired of each other. You know what I mean? They're just getting sick and tired of each other, and they just, you know. But they're still the best rock and roll band in the world. I feel that. I feel like that with Liverpool a little bit. I sort of feel like they're just sick and tired of the same thing every week. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. I just think we're stale, and we just need a freshen up. And I don't think this football today is destined for long term managers. And I think Klopp being at nine years at the club. I think it's as long as you get in modern football these days. If you get 10, 12, 11 years, big up, impressive. 
Um, but I, I just think nine years at the helm with the job he's done, it looks like on the outside that everyone's sort of just fed up. Does that make sense? Klopp said that himself about his last couple of years at Dortmund, didn't he? He said he needed to hear a different voice, and Dortmund did go badly off the boil in his last couple of seasons, especially his last season at Dortmund. They were badly off the boil, weren't they? Mm. Was anyone I actually think Klopp's done now, Frank, to be honest with you. Was anyone agree with this, lads? Anyone? And let's keep it real. A lot of these good players need shifting on in the summer, in my opinion. Gakko, Gravenberg, lovely. Robo, Samikas, Nunes, and Diaz, and Mo. You know, do you know, uh, you know the Mo one. If if, if Liverpool got under two hundred and twenty million for him in the summer, I'd let him go. Uh, I would. If the rumours are that PSG want to pay seventy five million for Luis Diaz, see you later. Um. Simicast is gone no matter what. I think Robbo stays, but I think Simicast is definitely gone. Uh, Gakpo and Gravenberg, uh, Gravenberg, Gravenberg will get be given another year. And Darwin Nunes, if it was up to me, I'd say this to Darwin Nunes. I'll tell him you're a left winger from there on. Because if we if we said to Darwin Nunes, you're a left winger, you're not a striker, you're a left winger, right? He, if we looked at it that way, Darwin Nunes is GA that he's got this season. If he was a left winger, it would be absolutely fine because we're not looking in to get our main goals. Because of his pace and athleticism, and he's actual he's actually pretty good passer of the ball as well in wide areas. You play left wing and you get an out and out natural finisher through the middle. I, I, I think that would be better. So but if Darwin's gonna be a striker, I just can't see Darwin being the striker for Ruben Albering if he is the manager coming in. I just can't see him being the being the striker. So I think Darwin's off in ice. Mo Salah, I think we've got to have conversations about. I think it's always best to sell your a player like Mo when he still has a bit of his peak left, and not when he's finished. You know, we sold Mane for me too late, a season too late. Because if you go and look at Mane's career when he left Liverpool, he looks like a finished footballer, don't he? And I, I think Mo is at the time where I look at it and go, I ain't giving right now. I'm not giving Mo Salah a new contract. I, I'm just not. I, I'm just not. And I don't want to let him go for free next year. So I, I'd actually sell Mo in the summer. I really would. Simicast is gone, and Darwin's on thin ice for me. If Darwin don't become a, um, if Darwin don't become a left winger, then I don't want him as a striker. So yeah, he can leave. Well, you have says uh, you reckon the United results are sort of dented, yeah. push mentally. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I, I, I thought I thought it would have galvanised us, but but we really looked. The attitude stunk. The attitude stunk at Man United, by the way. Like we genuinely thought we could just walk all over them, and and to a certain extent, we had that game pretty much pretty much under control but we did what we normally do against man united and we just let them have chances like you know that game today it was outclassed he was outclassed and he was out tactic but he just was like gasparini did a number on him like there's yeah. managers that have done numbers easy, on him i mean it wasn't and, even hard was it, it didn't it even look hard for him to it, do it it reminded me of napoli away like it's like it's it's like they watched Napoli away and went, you know what? We can get at these. We can get at these down the flanks. You know, whether we try the right, whether we try the left. They did the right against Napoli and completely toasted Gomez and Trent, if I remember. And um and the other they did it on the other side today with, with Costas and and Robbo. Toasted us. Can I can I can I answer Mikey here? Mikey Lee's oh just a big dead like us. And he says there are some knee jerk reactions. It's not knee jerk, is it really? You can't have a knee jerk reaction. Uh, yeah, we were piss poor, but we are all so negative. 
What what's needs to be, Mikey? What is needs to be positive about me? It's five. <laughs> it's five games we've been stinky. I know we won yeah. two of them. That's it. It's one. been going on for weeks. But it's weeks been stinky. Now. It's not negativity. It's been, it's it's been pretty. It's been pretty stinky since since the cup final. Mm. Hey, if I'm honest, like we haven't been flying. Like we haven't been playing well. <laughs> I, I, I would say, say this thing, right? Liverpool obviously are where they are in the league. is 71 points, yeah. I hate this thing that's going around at the moment. I saw the Klopp interview about it today as well, right? No one expected us to be in this position. So if we don't win it, it's not the end of the world. I can't be hearing that. I can't, I, 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 my problem with it is, yeah, I didn't think we'd be in this position at the beginning of the season. But my thought process has completely changed as the season goes on because we are in this position now and I, for me as a fan I want us to go and take the league why not? We're in this position we've got seven games to go with 71 points the same as Arsenal where it's got as much chance as Arsenal and Man City of winning this Premier League at the start of the season? No we didn't expect it but on mm -hmm. April the 11th 2024 I now do expect it because things have changed yeah Last season, I expected us to win the league and we finished fifth. Do you know what I mean? So, it, 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 things change. You might, things change. And I hate all this chat going around now. It's so, it's negative talk. And negative talk like this gets into the players. That's why I hate all this negativity. You know, we're in there. We should be going for the league. I agree with everyone here. We should be going for the league. My issue is, so. My issue is we're going for the league. We just look a bit tired and I look beat up right now. And we got, after Crystal Palace at home, which is now not an easy game, by the way, I we got three very difficult away games. And I believe for us to win the league, we've got to win all our Premier League matches, all seven. Because I think Arsenal will probably only drop points one or two times. And Man City are only two points behind us. So for, we've got to win every game. So... I, I I I just don't feel like we're going to do that right now. But yeah, so you know, only one behind us, Jay. Yeah, one behind us. So yeah, I just feel like it's look. Would I love us to win Premier League? I would, yeah. But all this talk I'm hearing at the moment, we did expect us to be here. That's driving me mad because yeah, none of us fine, did. Sir. But it's April 11th now, and we are where we are. So I do expect it now. You know, but things have changed. Well, um, if, if we John Neal, I think we've answered this here. Can anyone explain why Klopp goes full strength in a dead rubber that last round? Yet, picks that side tonight. Ridiculous. Is, this is, this is, this is, this is weird, the worry, it? It, it this is the weird. worry I've got. Uh, this is the worry I've got. Uh, the worry I've got is Klopp's going to start doing some mad shit. I and, and blow it. Like this is the worry I've got. Like, you know, he did. He, you know, pl playing those playing those players at Man United away in in Kwanzaa and and Bradley when you got Gomez and Canate on the bench for me it's just I, I don't I, I don't understand it. You play your best team and then tonight playing a weaker side when you played a stronger side in the weaker game beforehand i don't understand it but i totally agree with jamie it's like i didn't expect us to be where we are but i expect us to be further ahead now because of the games that we haven't won after watching us play like man united at home arsenal at home man city at home all all stellar stellar teams that we played against and we played them off the park and didn't get results so I expect us to be further. But we no, I'm searching for the logic in that. I'm searching for the logic in, you know, playing. Get a cup double. You can still well, get I'll, a cup double, even if we I'll drop go, out of this. I'm going to say something. I'm going to go. I'm going to say something mad here. Has the boss line this season been any better than Jordan Henderson last season? No, nah, I think I think he's I think he's been. I think he's no, got I'll, I'll eight, eight goals. He scored eight goals. He scored eight goals, but has he been any better in his whole play than Jordan Henderson? Because I, I look think, at Mil I think a lot of people would say um, Henderson has been better. 
because I think we're missing leadership. Oh, we'll be better this season. I think Milner. Like, I I said it when we replaced these players. This midfield overhaul, what we've done, and what Jurgen Klopp's done needs to be congratulated because this midfield overhaul that he's done in one year to be where we are should be. He should be given his flowers and congratulated for that, right? He should be. I'm not going to take that away from him, from Jurgen Klopp and the team. But we lost a lot of leaders. You know, Sabozla is not a leader, in my opinion. Um, McAllister is a leader. But I just, we've got no shatters on the pitch. It's very quiet. Virgil can lead from the back, but I've never really liked centre backs as captains because they're not really in the game. I just, I just look at it and feel like we miss certain, like a kind of character in our team right now. You know, it's just a kind of character that kick the boys up the arse sort of thing. I just, I feel everyone's a bit polite. You know, the, yeah, the, that's my issue of it. Steve says there's no one good my, enough to replace you. My, my, my thing about it, I've got to go. I've got to go in a bit, guys. Sorry. Um, my thing about it is if we if we kept Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones on. We'd have probably drew that game tonight, or even won it. I'm convinced. Like we had no control. We we lost control, and we looked, we looked wide open. Like those two guys had more of the ball than anyone else in the first half. Had more touches than anyone else in the first half. Created the most chances and had the best chances in the first half. Like that's just a fact for Liverpool. Well, you're going, aren't you? So yeah, Scottish bears. <laughs> Answer that one. Yeah. My God, do Liverpool miss money? Yeah, I, d I don't think we've been. I don't think we've had anyone on the left hand side that's been good enough all season. Yeah, but he, fortunately, Mane is and, well and, class. And for me, it. for me, I I think Edward sells Diaz because of what he's what he's done about his contract. Like you've heard that. Like, why is yeah. there so much crap coming out about Liverpool again? Like this is like this is the business end of the season. Don't want to be hearing us like tapping up managers without the clubs knowing about it and and our players talking about contracts behind behind the clubs back and and oh just nonsense. nonsense. Uh, I said you know Stop what I said. Came out, you know what noise. I said. You know what I said yesterday about Diaz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stop the noise. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah, said anyway. I've had my doubt, doubts. Over next season, I have my doubts. Over next, I, don't know. I think we'll win the league next season. I'll uh, tell you Mickey, what, well, Mickey, uh, Mikey M says, Let's face the truth, we have been lucky this season. I've you, always said that we, we've, we've, we've gone, gone behind like 19 times, times. <laughs> we've gone behind 19 I, times this season. I think, I think what Liverpool have had this season has been the individual quality of got us out of sticky situations. I think we can say that a lot of individual quality in our team has got out of sticky situations. But tactically, if you look at the season, not K Max says, we've gone behind a lot. You know, tactically, that shouldn't be happening ever, all the time. That should be, you know, you should be looking at to change that a little bit. But yeah, look, but we are where we are. We're 71 points. We can still win the Premier League. I just feel like the result against Man United, this result today against Atlanta, it's just. Yeah, it's just go to uh, damage morale a little bit. It cannot, you know. It's it's gonna be difficult now. It's gonna be really, really difficult. Zonati well, says uh, Keller has, has done a good job coming in. Yeah, and I miss Ali Only as good as the defence in front of him. Exactly. I miss Ali though. Now I miss Ali. What 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 you've seen though? With no Ali in goal, is how good Alisson actually is. And because Kelleher's not a bad goalkeeper at all, I'm not saying Kelleher's a very good goalkeeper, but what you see, the way we defend and the little amount of ch uh, goals we actually do concede when Alisson's in goal shows you just how good Alisson is. You know, we leave him one on one all the time and he keeps a clean sheet. It's mad. And, uh, uh, you know, GA, a good friend of mine. And it's only carrying on from uh, like what Dorothy said. If your goalkeepers are absolutely brilliant at one on to ones, what does that say of your defence? 
What does that say about your he tactics? He plays football, by the way, G.I. You know, me mate, he plays football. What's that say about and your he tactics? He goes on bro? bike rides and gets lost, the same fella. And yeah. Yusuf says, can we win 5 0 at Atalanta like last time? So what's yeah, the, the difference is, yeah, we could, but the effort we'd have to put in to win that game, saying, yeah. we'd be shattered for the Premier League games coming up. And then if it, if this was like in February, then a knockout game in February, then yeah, okay. But in April, you know, what is it? Going to be like the 20th of April next week when we play them or whatever it is. I just don't. Yeah, the amount of energy that team will have to take to win that game, because it might not be 90 minutes, it might go through the extra time, might win it on penalties, two-hour game, all that effort, and then got to play a way to Fulham a few, a few days later. That would take, will... take some doing. That'd take I, some will, doing. I will say this as well. If um, if we are getting Ammer in, I don't see Canate being his centre-back. No, I, I don't see another, I can see him buying another centre-back. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with Canate. Canate can't run with the ball. He can't travel uh-huh. with the ball. Like Am- Amarin wants defense. his defenders to travel with the ball into midfield. That, that's, he's how he, that's how he plays. It was a good defender, but it's the fitness thing. We're just not seeing him on the pitch enough, and that that ain't good enough. You need players that are going to be fit that you can depend on, and we haven't been able to depend on him since he got here. He spends too much time on the sidelines. I heard that we've been. If Amaran comes, he's looking at bringing Inacio and um, Diamande with him. So maybe we bring both of them in. I hope we do. That would be I'm, 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 I'm not sure it will be. <clears throat> I'm not I sure it will be. I, I, I still got this funny feeling that he's going to be deserving, you know. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've got, I've got this real feeling that it's not going to be Amaran. I, I've just got this weird feeling that the Almerin thing's a smoke screen for the real yeah. person we're going to get. I reckon it's going to be. I've got. I've got. I've been thinking this the last twenty four hours, and I've seen a lot of his, um, Almerin's comments and stuff like that, and he looks proper pissed off as well. Yeah, he does. And, uh, um, I've just got this feeling it is deserving. <laughs> I've got this feeling it is deserving. I, I, I think it's Gary O'Neill. I I, I, I no, think it's Gary Alonso. <laughs> Do you know if, uh, if Nunes, I'm being like hypothetical here. Did you hear that? What? I we heard it's it. going to be a long time. I don't know about that. My daughter is friends, time. and I can't see who she's friends with. Honestly, I can't. And uh, she said all this talk about uh, the Portuguese manager, Zabi's coming here. Yeah. She, she's, she believes it. But anyway, yeah, it, it, it does uh, look like a, it does look like a smoke screen. It's starting to look like that. Richard Keys, he's 50, he's fifty to one now. Richard I'll Keys, get on that. Richard Keys said, a hundred percent, it's Abi Alonso. It's a three-year contract. It's agreed, and he's already and he's already earmarked two players from Bayer Leverkusen that we're taking. Like, well, are, Richard Keys one. said it. Like, why would Richard Keys? He doesn't give a shit about Liverpool. <laughs> No, well, why would he come out and say it? <laughs> well, you know, let's look at this scenario. If Nunes and to miss that simple of chances God. when he was put through, and I mean it was simple, I would have scored that. I would have scored that. How would the game have panned out? We'd have won. <laughs> have gone on and won that like three three nil three i nil. think so i think we would have gone on and won three or four nil i really believe that their bottles would have gone and we would have just settled down that's me i, uh, I, think, of the that's harvey, I think of the harvey elliott shot it's the crossbar and goes in which it should have god knows how it hit the post that's just so yeah. weird if that had gone in that was one all like that We'd have, we'd have turned the screw then, gone in at half time, one all, come out. Right. Frank, I've got to go because the kids are. Uh, oh, kids brilliant. Are I'll see you later. The kids are crying, so yeah. I've got to run. Thank you, James. All right, all right, yeah. See you later, Frank. I'll be on next Thank week. You, right? Thank you, mate. Thank you so much. See you later, guys. See you later. Catch you with Thank you so much. Oh. He's gone. Yeah, I, I, you know, it was a sliding doors moment. What? 
it was a sliding doors moment, those those chances not going in. But I just feel like we kind of threw the game away by just just acting so nonchalant, like and conceding two. Un- like just they're just not Liverpool goals to concede. Like their players had all of our penalty areas themselves to score. Like when does that ever happen? Like the freedom of the park at home. And that and that ball came back was so slow coming towards Keller as well. Yes, it bounced off Keller's chest. It was crap goalkeeper. I've got to say, I'm sorry, it was crap goalkeeper. Uh, there's my uh, there's my uh, sponsors of my uh, Monday show, and he says um, that painting. When we are relying on Nunes as our main goal scorer, we are on a hiding to nothing. He just isn't the player we thought he was. In other words, and he just comes on and says, It's this inverted crap, isn't it? This inverted crap is, is like, it's hurting us at the sides, isn't it? They're getting in on us too easy, and then there's an easy chance for somebody standing in the middle to just pass it into the net. I've just got all performance was poor, atmosphere was non non existent, says Neil Lancaster. <laughs> They might as well not turn up tonight. Anfield Just ridiculous. Though, this season. It's not been and uh, Romeo and Kenobi. By a Leverkusen are definitely winning the Europa. Alonso as that team like a juggernaut right now. And uh, and says they genuinely should have had five or six and that's yeah. Atalanta. And I, I agree with him. Yeah. I agree. And um, it, it's it's just I've got like basic stuff for us since the beginning, and I thought like the reason that we were doing it was because Trent's such a good player at creating chances. But why Trent's been out? Why have we persisted with it when Trent's not there? Why? I, know. I mean, what use is Gomez in the inverted position? He can't cross. Terrible. And shoot. Terrible. And and Bradley, by the way, Bradley's got absolutely no end product. In any game, he had one good game at Chelsea versus Chelsea, and he's done nothing. He's got no assists since. No, we, we never, we never yeah. get it past the first man. We we really need we man. need a left back came out. We really need a left back. Someone to uh, tackle, and I think Bradley's a good little tackler. He just get back. He just win the ball. Yeah. Now Vernon Fleming, I feel the team needs to go in a different direction now. No more of square pegs and round holes when it comes to tactics. We are just too predictable to play the last couple, the last couple of season. What do you reckon? That's, that's the word yeah. of the day, isn't it? Predictable. We look predictable, and and other teams, have, other managers, sorry, are figuring us out and knowing how to do us, knowing how to beat us, knowing how to put pressure on us, knowing to get us to get in on us down the sides. And then, like, you know, they get in us down the sides and our centre-backs aren't there when, they, you know, we're on, they're on the bloody halfway line. They get in at the side and it's getting passed into the net, isn't it? And that's happening week after week. We're chasing, we're chasing games every time. Every time we're chasing a game. That's because we're always a goal down in the first, like, yeah. Yeah. half. No, let, OK. All right. I, I, I'll ask you, you know, honest opinion, honest assessment came up. Have Liverpool got a chance next week against Atalanta? Yeah. Yeah, Liverpool have always got a chance. We went to Old Trafford and had 27 shots yeah. and should have, should have battered that team. Yeah. We've always got a chance, but the opposition's always got a chance as well. Because we give chances away. Like, what I want us to do now to the end of the season is I want us to let the opposition have the ball more. Because if the opposition have the ball more, then we can take it off them and break on them. And it's not the opposite way round. And I feel like it's been the opposite way round a lot now. And we've give, give away big chances. And teams like Sheffield United could have had two or three goals, by the way. Like, <laughs> like that is a fact. Like, and the game before that against Brighton, I know we beat Brighton in the end, but Brighton had a hat full of chances as well in that game. Yeah. Like, like 
they had decent chances. Yeah. You know, Fluffy everybody does. Like chances against us and, and fluffed them like we fluffed I just, tonight. I just want us to be solid. Like, we've never been solid on the clock. Like, like, all we've got to do is not concede goals to the end of the season because we know we can score one or two. So just keep it tight now to the end of the season. And and we've got a really good chance of winning a double. I don't so really I care about the Atalanta away game now. I just don't really care about it. Jamie was saying before, what if we win them one nil? Still going at it, looking for that second goal instead of just jumping up shot. You know, why can't we just jump up shot? It doesn't mean we have to, we have to do that like all game, every game for the rest of the season. Just do it like for one game so we can win a game one bloody nil for once. Like even Sheffield United, like we were two one up, and and we were lucky to get back into that game with that McAllister goal. Yeah. And we were still we were still down the other end of the pitch. Like they were still breaking on us. And I'm like, are you out of your mind? Just shut shut up shop. Like you've got enough defenders. <clears throat> you've got loads of centre backs now. Like bring a bring a centre back on. Put five at the back. I don't care. Just don't concede. Don't concede big chances. And then <clears throat> there's another big chance. And you're like, oh my God. And it's gonna be I like think that we've at the end of the found season. out, came okay, but we we we've got enough players now to just make ourselves more solid to the end of the season, and I don't care if we win games one nil. I don't care. Like we win games one nil, and Arsenal drop points, we win the league. Done. We know yeah, we well, do it. well, these two comments here, and it's uh, a mate of mine, Jay. I don't see the leader in midfield. The shouts have gone. No Milner, no Henderson. Even though this is a better side, there's no leader. And I think he's uh, spot on. But I think, uh, you know, I really believe uh, Virgil. Uh, he's a good leader. You can't take anything away from him. And all these bloody injuries that we've uh, suffered, that's got a big say. And Mikey M says, if I don't see another attitude against uh, Crystal Palace, I will be really upset. I'm still hopeful for winning the PL. I believe that has been the players' focus ever since the new year. What do you think of that? That's a good comment, actually. Nothing's over till it's over, so we're still in this in this European time. We've still got a good chance of winning the league because nothing's over. But I'm just, I'm running out of positive, and I'm usually the prince of positivity, even when we've had a bad result, like, but I just don't see us changing our tactics, like we were saying before about Jürgen's tactics, it's like he's not learning every time we're having a bad performance lately, we're not seeing anything different in the next game, we're seeing the same thing, and it's like, I don't know, it's the man has a bang to the bloody head or something, like, because even in his press conferences, he doesn't seem the same person now. It's like something's changed in him in the last couple of months, like the last six weeks or something. We're just uh, He's leaving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he, knows, he knows he's going to move into that two million pound villa. Logic in in what he's doing and why he's picked um, the eleven he's picked for each game. But I'm not seeing that lately. I'm not understanding why he's picking um, certain teams for certain games. I'm like, well, why have you done that? Like, why is this happening? Because usually with Klopp, you know why he's doing things. And I'm not understanding him lately. I'm not seeing the logic and the reasoning in his um, in his selections lately. Well, you've said that, haven't you, though, okay, K-Mac? You know, I, I, you, you don't think that he's going to... You, you're going to say that he's going to be unpredictable until the end of the season. Yeah, yeah I think so. He's going to be erratic. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that, Steve. I, I, I thought Elliot was really good when he was on the pitch. Like he was literally controlling the game. Like I thought he was good, and and for some reason Elliot gets dragged off all the time, or Elliot doesn't start. Like imagine, like how does Elliot feel? Like he's been really, really good. Like literally driving the team on, playing the most minutes, playing the most games, and then Manchester United away, he gets hooked, and Gravenberg get played, gets played. Like what's that saying to Elliot? Like, what I say to Elliot is, I don't really care how well you play, mate. If I've got my favourites, they come in. 
Mate. What about uh, new, new, guy, new guy's gonna gonna love Elliot. Gonna love him. Well, what about um, on Sunday? Would you play Ali until the end of the yeah. season? Yeah, yeah. Ali, Ali's in. Ali's in from from start to finish now. End of the season. Yeah. Ali's in. Trent's in. Canate's in. Uh, Rob uh, Gomez plays left back. Sorry. Yeah. Like Endo McAllister, Jones, not Dom, not Dom. No, no. And you play Diaz, Nunez, Salah, and then you've got Elliot off the bench, who's been absolutely sensational. Yeah. He can come in, Gakko can eight. come in, and then yeah. Jota can come in gradually to get to get fitter. Yeah. And then you've got Bradley in, in case Trent's lagging. Then you've got the likes of McCa- uh, you've got Dominic. Uh, Dominic Savolsai and you've got Gravenberch to come in in midfield and then you've got Robbo to come in and you've got Quonset to come in. You've got all your players back. Like There's no reason why we shouldn't be winning the league with a full squad. There's no reason. No, it's it, 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 really it, a hard game left, is there? I mean, all of these no, games... Maybe Villa a hard game left. Maybe Top Villa players... It's the tough game, but like the rest of them, we should be walking, including the derby, the bloody form Everton are in. Derby or derby or not, we should be beating them. Like Tottenham at home is the hardest game left, and Top Tottenham might have already all be home and host with fourth place by then. Mm-hmm. You know, Aston Villa might might already know that they're going to be fifth by then. They're like ten points ahead of Man United, so those two those two are probably home and host. So there'll be nothing for them to play for when we get them in the third to last game and the second to last game. Um, I reckon, though, you know, we, we, we've still got a great chance of winning the league. We have. And we you have. know what came up as well? And I think, you know, I was fuming at the beginning because it wasn't media or anything. It was, I was so angry at the way we played tonight and the changes, six changes against a decent side. And one of the lads said that the sixth in the league, Atalanta, but they're playing for the Champions League spot. So they're not, they're not a bad side. But to have six changes in a quarter final, it didn't half upset me. Yeah. It really upset me. And I thought as, as soon as, as, soon as I seen already. as soon as I seen Costas and Gapco I was like, uh, I, I don't get this. As soon as I seen those two, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, nah, this this doesn't feel good. And then two minutes in, we were all over the shop, and and our goalkeeper saved it with his face. They knew then, didn't they? They realised we could they get, get in. Them. Yeah, they knew they could get in. But when they, they, had, they had their first two centre backs out as well. Yeah, I don't know. They had two midfielders as centre backs. They had their yeah. best player, um, who, who we should go for, by the way, Scalvini. Um, they had him out, he, and and you know they had they had Luckman out as well. Imagine if they had Luckman tonight. Jesus yeah. Christ, <laughs> we'd have been toasted about seven nil. Yeah. With, with, with Odom Luckman because he's he's got previous as well because he's played for Everton. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, was the um, Leverkusen West Ham game? They won 2 0. 2 0. And that's at West Ham's ground. So And two yeah. late goals as well. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be a Xavi Gasparini final, probably. Yeah. I heard, uh, I've heard that he's Frank's new, man- Frank's the new manager and he's bringing his panel. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good That's a really good point that, that Ludovic has put. Klopp, Klopp's lost the plot in both cup games. He has. Where is he? He has. He's played. He, he's played. He, he's underplayed teams, like as in, not respected them, like Manchester United away, and um, and Atalanta at home. It's true. Yeah, he has really lost poor management it lately. It seems it doesn't seem like the the normal Jurgen. and he's just doing things differently <laughs> with his selection. I mean, it's not making sense. I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest. He lost the plot in the cup final. He played a load of kids. <laughs> like, like, it was pure luck that we won that, let's be honest. Like, there's no way we should have won that against Chelsea with 
with three academy players that have played less than three games in the first team between them all. Like, let's be honest. Like, it's, if we if we do if we'd have been beaten by Chelsea in the final, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have looked at that and gone, oh, you know, yeah, we we deserve to win with all those kids that we had in the team. Like, so he, he's done it three times this season, really. But we've managed to get out get out the woods with one of them, with Virgil Van Dijk. Can I read? Um, Who knows? Ten minutes of Oregon. Sorry. Washing your face here. Can I read Dorothy Langham because uh, because she said George Scott has posted this. Has just posted this. Now George is a regular guest. He's the Wash Yankley boy, and uh, in my view. That was a really bad decision to have that protest with no flags on the cop. It took away the magic of what Anfield is all about. And to do that on what is probably Klopp's last European game was terrible. I am not blaming the protest for the defeat. That was down to the players' performance. And Jürgen starting 11 which I found to be really strange, with no Diaz or Salah from the start. What has Bradley done to upset Jürgen? Our defence was a, he must have said, shambles. Yeah. You know, I, you've got I've to... Got, I've got to go, lads, all right. Um, oh, thanks, thanks, Ken. Great, great show, man. I'm sorry, I've been on for a while. Cheers, mate. Right. No, no, I'm so sorry there, K Mac. You know, you're going, but, you know, okay, that's not you. Thank you so much for your input. I still, th I still think we can do it, lads. We can still win the league. Yeah, yeah. It's me. I, I do as well. And some lad posted before, didn't he, at the, you know, when I was reading, he said, is it all negative? I wish he would have stayed. Because we're not negative, it's just opinion, as you know. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's upset. Oh, Everybody. He's Joke FC. <laughs> <Isn't he? laughs> See you later. See you later. See you later. Yeah, mate. Thank you. I just feel, Frank, like obviously George is showing a lot of emotion and passion there. It's a former red. He's. He's he knows what this club's like, you know, and he he feels really hurt by this, like by the way he said, because I saw it on Facebook as well, and people were commenting saying George is hurt by it, and it it, it is it's, it's the fans, it's the passion, it's it was just dead dead in there it was tonight. It was, um, you know, our flags. It gives, I don't care what anyone says, our banners, our flags, you never walk alone, you know, being belted out at every game gives our players a lift. Yeah. It was like a fucking empty stadium. Without the flag. You didn't look, even look. see Klopp, did look. you? Yeah, I mean, look. Yeah, passion, that's passion. Tony's uh, treble seven says, our flank, our right flank, wide open. Every game, yeah. Every game. So, whose tactics are they? Lee, whose tactics are they? Clops, aren't they? I'm Linders. Clop and Linders, the pair of them. Pair of them, yeah. yeah. And uh, people are wanting Linders to be our next manager. Yeah, I want him out of the club. I wouldn't let him manage a Sunday League team, mate. What I don't get, Frank, is you didn't even see Jurgen riling the fans up tonight when we were down. He weren't doing none of that, was he? What do you think of Mikey M? Yep, we have a chance to win the league, that is, but it will probably cost us the flight. Eh, the, I'm sorry, uh, uh, you know, win that game next week, but it will probably cost us the flight in the uh, Premiership. What do you think of that? Well, the, league, okay. well, the Premier League's more important, isn't it? I mean, as much as I'd like us to overturn things in Italy, it's going to be really, really hard. So, uh, you know, I'd spew that, like, personally, to go for the league. I'd spew that game and play a load of kids in Italy and go for the league. 
because we've got a good chance. We've got a better chance of winning the league than we have of overturning that. OK, it's only one game, the game in Italy. But again, it's in Italy. And we lost 3-0 tonight at home to this team. I can't see us keeping a clean sheet in Italy, which means we've got to score five. You know what I mean? What is it? One, we'd have to score five. Well, what is Vigo talking about next season already? Sorry? Why? Why is Vigo talking about next season already? And about Amarim? This season's not finished. No. No. I'm getting really annoyed now about this. Yeah. But, that, but that's the way some... Listen, it's, it's all opinion. It's all opinion. And, you know, tonight... Don't forget, you know, it was a bad result again on a Sunday against Man United. We should have trounced them. We should have trounced them. And you know it and I know it. And this is the uh, the reaction after tonight, because we were so poor. We were so poor in that game. And you've got to go through the whole team. You've got to look at Jürgen Klopp and his selection. Drop him. This is a quarter final of a very important uh, 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 cup. And this is what happened. When you look at it in the you know the light of the day, it was a poor, poor selection, dropping six players to bring in six other ones. And he really thought that he could get away with it. He underestimated Atalanta. He really underestimated them. And look what happened. It's been proved. But it was the defence that let us down. It was the defence that let us down. Shocking goals to give away. Absolutely ludicrous goals. And that's the point. It was the defence. You can't blame anybody else but the defence. The defence has looked bloody awful a lot this season, hasn't it? Like, let's be honest, the defence has looked shambolic at times this season. Uh, well, do you reckon that, uh, all right, Lee, you know, answer this, and it's what Mikey M says, and think about it. Ali is giving the defenders confidence in another way. No bad things on Kelleher, though. He's great, plus one. Love the guy. So, it, what he's actually saying, Mikey M, is that when we go out there, our defence... And he does, no matter what anyone says, he's the best goalkeeper in the world. And he gives them confidence. He oozes confidence to them. And they all, you know, they, they, they do play better with him in goal. Whereas, if anything gets past our defence, and I know that he's been blocking great and everything else, but when you see that mistake tonight, I think the confidence of the defence went and that's how they scored so easily. The confidence was shattered when they went 1-0 up. Go yeah. ahead, Lee. Yeah, Alison being back, that would be great because he is brilliant one-on-one -on -one and he gives the defence <laughs> more confidence. As good as Kel has been, Alison is the best goalkeeper in the world, I believe. And it gives us more confidence at the back. Um, but the defence has just been rubbishy too many times. Like we're letting in those slop we were letting in sloppy goals before Allison got injured. Yeah. And we're letting in even sloppier goals now. Yeah. Which is, which is I, think the, I think the third goal was down to Dom, to be honest with you. That was just no, that was shocking. no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But you know, it, it's just stupid mistakes. Yeah. And he's seen that, you know, you've got to give Silvaz like he just went like that. He, you know, he, 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 you could see it in his face when yeah. they scored. He just went, didn't he? Yeah, he's I'm going to give you that in a minute. I just want to answer this. And it's normal. Hey, Frank, under suspicion, who was the killer, please? The killer. Look, you get a phone call and it's wild 
Um, I don't want to give the, the thing away, but anyway, I'll just say this. I'm not giving it away, right? But they get a phone call. A woman receives a phone call. He works in the police station. You know, she's, she, she must be a little police woman. And she goes and tells the lead detective and says, we've got him. We've got, we've got him. We've got the killer. We've got him. And that's when, you know, they find out. But it was too late for everything. They ruined the lives of two people. They ruined the lives. And that goes on in real life, by the way. It goes on in real life. I was watching something today, real life, you know, about people. And you, you see this cop, you know, body cam. And uh, he was, all these traffic things, he was pulling them up. He was a traffic cop, you know, pulling them up. But he was planting drugs in the, uh, the thing, in the cars. And he even pulled them and put handcuffs on a young woman with a daughter, a little daughter in the, in the car. And he said that the daughter put the drugs in a bag, the little girl. But he got done for it. And he only got 12 years. He should have got 12 years for all the charges that were against him. 64 charges of, you know, being a dirty cop, planting drugs and cars. He was horrible, horrible, you know, cop. But anyway, yeah. So I'm sorry to digress there, lads and lasses. I, I never mentioned Jane, did I? I'm sorry, Jane, if you're listening in, I'm awfully sorry. I didn't mention it, sweetheart. And uh, Ludovic, yeah, what a name. Klopp lost the plot at uh, a uh, uh, cup match against Man United, where his man management was really poor. And that's right, you know. It is right. And uh, Mikey Lee says, Leave the and we're at home. They weren't where they, they were away. They were at the uh, West Ham. No, I think they were at home. Nah, it was in Germany. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, was it? I'm sorry, yeah. but oh, there's Jazz. Oh, Jazz. Oh, mate. I'm so sorry. I, I wish you could have come and see me, you know, Jazz. But when you said you were in a coach and everything else, and I, I, I didn't know what time you were going. If you would have been in a car coming to match, I would just give you my address and you could have come and see me. Ah, oh, Jazz, I'm sorry, mate. I'm really sorry. You should have come and seen you at half time, Frank. <laughs> oh, but I blame my colleague, you know. I don't think he'll ever speak to me again. You know? I don't want to see Costa Simicas in that team again. I love these. Uh, uh, I love these names. Look, Zia. Never seen this Zia. Can you there press the uh, the like buttons, please? He should have saved the first goal. I think. Yeah, he should have done. I think Carrius would have saved the first goal. Jesus! Don't say it. Oh, come on. Uh, my mate, at half time, I'd fancy us after a half time of 90 minutes. That's a good point, though. Yeah. FDR, we have had too many of these performances going in expecting to win and our players not trying. Do you yeah. think that it was a, like a... Do you think that it was... Um, it was like going in overconfident. Yeah, I think so. I think they went in way too confident tonight. But I looked at mixture the team. That, mixture of that and not really being prepared for what I knew. What that, I didn't know exactly how Atlanta would play, but I knew they'd be prepared for us. And we were unprepared for them being prepared, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. yeah. We were unprepared for the way they were prepared. And Gasparini prepared them well. Yeah, but, you know, Jal says he should have gone in. He should have gone stronger. That's clock. And he should have. I said that the other night. 
is what I, I said that the other night. I hope he doesn't play, you know, or make too many changes. He's got to play a strong side. That wasn't a strong side tonight, in my opinion. In my opinion, when Jota there came on, he had a goal, didn't he? Nearly got a penalty. Yeah. And he had yeah. a head, you know, it was just over his head. But he still got to it. And he had to go. Mo Salah came on. And he had two goals and both of them were blocked. And one of them was a good save by the uh, thing. That's yeah. what we fucking missed tonight. Having a go at the goalkeeper. Having a go at their goal. How many how, how many great saves did that goal? Can anyone tell me how many great saves did that goal? One save he made. The whole game. One. And that was from Mo. Mo. And what did I say to you, Frank, when we spoke earlier on? I said to you, I guarantee you Gakpo will start tonight. We've fucking yeah, started him. Yeah, you did. Oh. Frank, I will ask Jamie to send you the pictures I took. Oh, all right, Taz. I hope you, I hope you're not pictures of uh, all the uh, uh, Bergamo uh, lads, you know, the Italians <laughs> celebrating. Because that's where Atalanta come from. I know a lady who lives in uh, Bergamo comes from Bergamo. She's a great girl, smashing woman. She's one of ours. And uh, can anyone suggest anything for Frank's algorithm? It sounds very painful. <laughs> yeah, just press the like. Thank you, Taz. And. Uh, Keep it there. By starting Samikas meant one of the main players would miss out. And that ended up being Trent. Yeah. I, I don't know if Trent is there. Is he fit? Because I know he's been training. So if you're training, you must be fit. Even Ali wasn't on there. You know, he wasn't a sub-goalkeeper. And I can't understand Klopp. I really can't. I, I, I just can't understand them with some of his decisions, especially substitutions. Jota, Jota's been fit for two weeks, Frank. He should have yeah. started tonight for me. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I would. I was a lot to have seen, and I, I, I'm not talking hindsight here. Really, I'm not talking about hindsight. Mo, Diaz. And Jota. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen that. And I would have said, you know, about Nunes, you know, coming on there when we're doing well. And I would have said that. I want a Bradley to play. Yeah. I didn't want I, I wanted uh, Robertson to play left back. You know, that's the back four. That's the back four. And I think it would have been a lot stronger than what the, the back four that he plays with uh, Joe being on on the right, trying to be the inverter player, and he's he's not an inverter. Can I ask you a question, Frank? Yeah, go on. Is Soberslice starting to worry you a little bit? Yeah, he is. Um, you know, he, he, you see, he looks confident when he gets the ball. He just looks it. But I think now tonight, um, you know, with, with their third goal, I think his confidence will go. His end products worry me. Yeah. Redbirds, I think this was the worst tactical display all season. Late. Yeah, I'll go along with that. It was absolute uh, horse poo, wasn't it? Tactical display tonight. I just I didn't see any any real logic in it. Like once we were one 0 down, which came very early, too early. Um, I just didn't see anything from there on in. Well, Sir Bosley is looking like sixty million down the drain. Says keep it real. <laughs> Anyone agree there? Yeah. 
I do at the moment, yeah. Me? Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. Like, um, he's not having a great, uh, a great period, but like he, he was out, wasn't he? And since he's come back, we haven't seen an awful lot. But I, I think we've seen enough in the early part of the season that with a new manager and possibly a new formation, we could see a lot better from um, Sobers Lie. Like, you know, if, it, if the things he's good, if, if he's allowed to do the things he's good at more, rather than like running around, chasing to tackle and that, like he's an attacking midfielder and a very, very good one. So uh, we'll see what happens next season with the manager. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to leave the little last bit out. This is, uh, this is for uh, versus Crystal Palace. Alison, uh, Bradley, Robbo, Canate, Virgil, Jones, Enzo, Mac, Nunes left, Salah right, Jota in the middle versus Palace. Diaz pisses me off. His dad's at a, a right tee. It's past 12 o'clock, Frank. You can swear, mate. Oh, uh, it's in enough swear. I was frightening me, mate. He doesn't like football. He, he's a very gentle man. Yeah. And I blamed him, do you know, when he was going, I said, don't you ever fucking ring me again when a match is on. I said, you're, are you sitting there? Are you sitting there? Do you like football? Oh. And I'm, I'm looking at him, yeah. Fucking hell, I'm not trying to watch the, and you're fucking there uh, texting me, by the way. And yeah, and it's pinging. Oh, fucking hell, I'm trying to watch the game. So I was fuming. He was sitting there and he had to get up and make a fucking cup of tea for him. Uh, you still wanted to hear my voice at half time. He was sitting there. <laughs> half Francine. I, I wouldn't sell half Francine. Half Francine would go mad. <laughs> she knows he's, a, he's a, 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 an unlucky omen for me. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you I'm, I'm going to be brutally honest, Frank. Here. Sunday, Sunday still pissed me off more than tonight. I don't know if it has any of you. But no, you never, yeah, well... Uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, it probably did piss me off more than tonight. Oh. Tonight is, um, you know, not far behind it. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a good point there, lads. What Ian McHale says. Was like a performance from Klopp's first season. What's a grim. Yeah, and you know he's been with us nine years, and this is a quarter final of a very important cup, the cup that he's never won. And he plays that team. He makes six changes in a quarter final. <laughs> then he tries to uh, get it back, but it's too late because there was no rhythm by the time Salah came on at that time, and you know the rest of them. Just no rhythm whatsoever. That's going to be it as well, Frank, isn't it? Can I tell you, like, do you know where in the very first, like, 15 minutes of the game, he was, our, he, he was the best player on the field? Gapco. Gapco. Yeah. That shows you how bad we were. And Gapco was terrible uh, tonight, you know, overall. He done nothing. He done nothing. Unfortunately, you know, I, I, I know I'm a, a, they were all bad. But I'm just trying to say that he was the best player in the first 15 minutes. Who was the worst player? Who's the worst? Simicas. Fuck. Okay, I'd miss. I, I, I'd give them all two, to be honest. It's terrible. Everyone, even their Kelleher. Kelleher Endo. Saves Endo. about three sets. Three. But Endo, Frank. He was shocking. Was you having playing on... Um, was you having playing on Sunday against Palace? Or was no. you rather have... Was you rather have uh, McAllister at number six? Or... I'll have Jones six. Jones is a six, and I'll have um, McAllister, and um, I'll have McAllister and Trent in midfield, personally. 
Good question. Well, well, the, the Red Birds, would you agree with the Red Birds? Whoever the next manager is, I think there'll be a few leaving. I said that earlier, there'll be an extra dose. I think there will be. Okay. All right. What do you think, Lou? Do you think that? Yeah, I think there'll be a few players leaving. The thing is, it's, um, it's going to cost us a, quite a lot of money, isn't it? If players are leaving, we've got to replace them, obviously. And we're not going to get the fees we want if we're getting rid of players that we've not long bought. Like people are saying, get rid of Nunes. We're not going to get the fees we want. So um, the replacements are going to have to be quite cheap-ish. You know, we can't be spending big money like to replace players when we ain't got the money and we're not getting big fees for getting rid of players. So it is a worry. It is a worry. Okay. I'm, I'm tickled. Hi lads, reminds of me of the Irishman, because I won't mention this fella's name. Second season at the Stoke 6 1, knew it was the end. That's a very good point. That is a very, very good point. Well in, Nant. Well in, Nant, mate. Thank you. Please, oh, someone made a comment like that. And keep it real. Klopp probably isn't bothered about the possibly about possibly losing out on the European League trophy, as he would have gained a friendship with Gasparini, which means more to him. Okay, now. I think we just got found out tonight. That's all that matters. Gomez was terrible. Sure, he was playing in sandals. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, you know, when we were in the European Cups and everything in the uh, 70s and 80s, early 80s, uh, we were playing Everton and I was listening to Billy Butler. Right. And, uh, you know, Billy's an Evertonian. And he said, I've got news for all us blues. He said, Liverpool on Saturday are playing in Wellies. <laughs> 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 I said, nah, I think that was funny. <laughs> he was funny, Billy Butler, wasn't he? Yeah. He's still going, is he, uh, Frank? Yeah, Billy he's still Frank. going, yeah. Uh -huh. I had him on my show twice, didn't I? You know, before COVID, that is. Bad day at Black Rock, lads. We'll be back, says Colin Dykes. Did you ever see that uh, film with Spencer Tracy? Bad day at Black Rock. I think I've great seen film. that one, yeah. Yeah, great film. He's, he's all in black, isn't he? Spencer. We won't spend in the summer. Linda has been in for another boob job, says Norman. We need money from somewhere in the <laughs> summer, so somebody's going to have to bring in a big fee. So to well, my crap. If, if that's Diaz or Mo, then so be it, maybe, so we can have money for the new manager. And it also depends on whether those but, players... But, but, but why, why, why shouldn't he have money anyway? Why should we sell players? We can get rid of the Deadwoods, yeah. Get rid of them, by all means. But why should we sell players for our managers to have money? Because they, the, they put it all into golf, right? Put it into everything. There lies the problem. New yachts, 240 million pound yachts. Yeah. And they want to buy a new club. And 240 million pound baseball play uh, for dollars. 240 million he paid for the uh, a baseball player. Do you remember a few years ago? And uh, all your plums was funny, says uh, Norma. Staggering to see so many people blaming. There are no flags on, on the cup. It's all on the players in red and manager, says Ant. Gomez couldn't hit a cow's arse with a banjo lad, says Ian McHale. Uh, anyone going to bet on the national? Yeah, I've got mine on already. I don't gamble. I don't gamble. No, I've never put a bet on in my life. I've never even done the lottery. Well, 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 is, when, I, when, I, when I was married, I did. 
on the national that was your yeah, I pulled that on. And I always remember winning on uh, two two horses. One was Alzanetti and eighty eighty one or something like that. One okay. that. Okay. And the other one, uh, oh, I forget his name, an Irish lad, the Irish jockey, I forget the name of the horse. Dunwoody? An Irish Richard jockey. Who? Richard Dunwoody? No, who's the other fellow? He was great. Uh, Kieran Fallon? No, not a fellow. Uh, Peter Scudamore? No. I suppose you do Frankie Notorious considering he's Italian, Frank? No, uh, no, not Franco Dottori, no. But um, I forget his name. He won the national, it was the only national he ever won. What year? About uh, 2010, 11, something like that. Oh, uh, McCoy. That's him, McCoy. Yeah. Runners yeah. on him. Yeah. Runners on him. Yeah. Red Room Banker. <laughs> I'll just tell your fans out there, Frank. Kitty's Kitty's light will win the national. And uh, the other fella says Norman. Ian, Queen Eljan at home and fans screaming for Gomez to shoot. For FC, and uh, I don't bet I'm the uh, that unlucky if reincarnation exists. I'd come back as myself. Uh, good one, good one. Love that, um. this is a bit. And that says, uh, do you know why he took Nunes off, Frank? Yeah, because um, oh, he was he was shocking. He was doing nothing. But I looked at midfield, midfield was terrible. And I've always said that Elliot's better coming off of, off the bench. Yeah. Yeah. I would never have started him. I've got a question for you, Frank. Yeah, look, that says Tony McCoy. Thank you, Tony. There's four wheels there's four wheels there's four wheels on a car, Frank. Yeah. How many is four and off? How many's fallen off? Four wheels on a car. Three. Of our season three, I reckon. <sighs> you reckon that it's, uh, the wheels have fallen off? Yeah. I don't think so. I, I'm going to give our lads a chance. I'm going to be positive because we're, we're top of the league. And the lads who were awful tonight have put us off the top of the league. That's the way I look at it. But I said against Man United when we played them in the cup, I said our lads will be bursting to get at these. And we were bursting to get at them. We should have trounced them. But we ended up drawing 2-2. Two -two. Now, I could easily say the same. But I'll tell you what. This time next week, this time next week, we'll have put up a far, far better show. A far, far better show than we did tonight. That's one thing we will do. Do you reckon we still got a chance? Hmm? Or not? Do you reckon we got a chance or not? Listen to this one. Put your money on the Mersey Tunnel, says Ian McHale. Two pound, two pound, two ten p each way, and that's that's what it costs to go through. <laughs> that's even better. Gomez couldn't hit the ocean from a boat. <laughs> I've never seen him at the target yet. I have not seen him at the target no. once with his shots. No, no, no. I, I, and the dreadful. And he was about a few minutes ago, about 10 minutes ago, and he blazed it over the bar. The, 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 the Atalanta players were made up with that. He just said, yeah. I wouldn't mind if he hit the keeper, if he hit it straight at the keeper, because that would be on target, even though it was straight at the keeper. I wouldn't mind that, but he never hits the target. 
my mates ordering me a program. I, I don't get you, Daz. What do you mean, ordering me a pro? I mean, you, let me know if you haven't got a their program. Let me know, Daz, mate. Uh, the glass is in half empty, bro. It's completely empty. That's really having a go, you, you know. I can't listen to him no more, man. Everybody is upset, though. Let's just focus on movies, bro. I'm sorry, Frank, but you know my frustration when I comments like that it just drives me insane, man. Yeah, it, it, well, but the thing is, you see, it does drive us insane. It really does. But you've got to take, you know, a step back and say, well, okay. No, uh, let, let me just answer this, please. Daz. From tonight, I mean, Frank, couldn't get one. Listen, Daz, uh, I'll try and get you one, mate. Okay. I'm not going to run out now and get you one. You know, it might get mugged for the ticket, <laughs> for, the <laughs> for the program coming back. Lord Luke and, and Shaga, at least they stayed guns here. That pisses me off. Yeah, I think he's pissing every every one of us off. Every fight's a fair fight when you're a cannibal, says Ian Zigby. Absolutely. And uh, the kicker. Where's the where that? A bit. Oh yeah, Collins uh, takes. It's the kick up the ass we needed. It could be, you know. Uh, are you using this like old adage, like you know, it, 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 it could be a blessing in disguise? I don't think it is. No, I don't, because I've been saying that every after every poor performance for the last five or six weeks. This yeah. is the kick up the backside we needed you know we've had a bad performance they'll come out and give us a really good performance next time and it just hasn't happened it just hasn't been happening for weeks and weeks on end we have a crap performance i mean the chef united is all right we just about won but it, it was a crap performance um mcallister pulled us out of it didn't he with that wonder goal and it's just going on week after week now, crap performance after crap performance after crap performance. And then the following week, you think there's going to be a reaction. We're going to have a really good game where we're on it like for 90 minutes and we bury a team. And it's just not happening. Get your boots on, Carlson. Aye, aye. I have to go. Well, uh, yeah, I understand that. I, I, really do. I really understand that. Um, like as uh, Norman said, it's the manner of defeat, not the defeat. However, we move on, and our club does mir miracles and comebacks like no one else. That's a very good point. And uh, T T T Tony Treble Seven says gap goal was crap. He was, he, he really was. He, he did a couple of good runs in the first 15 minutes. That was it. Uh, yeah, boys. Clear out in the summer. Virgil, Saleh, Gomez, Samikas, and Diaz. Give a, give a drawing a few quid to bring in, please. Who's a drawing? I don't think it's going to be Amarin. Yeah. We can't score from the run of play anymore. That's good, that. That's a good point. Yeah. Drunk ego. Well said, drunk. Colin Dykes again. But we haven't lost before tonight. But we haven't lost since. Uh, oh, it, it's not just like a uh, month. It's been a couple of years, hasn't it, since we lost our own? Mm -hmm. Since COVID, I think, was it? No, don't, forget, don't forget it. Like, oh, no, last <laughs> season won it, but the last season we lost a few at home, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, in the European, you know, a, a European match. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? 11 years, it is. Wow. Wow. Klopp threw that away, says Tony, treble seven. 
and Ian McCurtsey spot on there, Lee. Yeah, Jay's me, mate. He says, keep the flags, wear, wear your own clothes and boycott the shop. I said that. I was talking to uh, me mate before the game. He was on his way. He said, I'm just going for a bevy before I go in. He's talking to me on the way down. Just excuse me one sec. Go on, carry on. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. As long as you can hear me. Oh, you won't hear me with a dollar. And what has happened was, I said to him, he said to me, he says, uh, no flags in there. I said, well, why isn't there? I said, the best way to protest is not to buy anything in the shop. In the shop. Or in the grounds itself. I said, because I've seen thousands buying loads in there. That's down to get at them. Not like having no flags or banners. That's telling you. So, someone, someone's telling you to walk on hot cinders. That's what I mean. You know, say, oh, don't bring your flag. Stand on it. Do you think the owners are going to go, oh, yeah, oh, listen, we, we, we can't put a, a price tag on. We can't put, a, a, put it up by 2%. That's not going to stop stop them. Surely to God, they must have sat around these dogs and gone like that. Eh, what shall we do, lads? Yeah, I'll tell you what, we won't bring their flag. Do you ever remember when uh, they wanted flags and banners banned when they first came? Do you ever remember that? Yeah. So that just plays into their hands. That's played right into their hands because they can come out again and say, we don't want them in the ground. And you'll be pulled. And what are they going to do then? Are they going to stop and say, oh, we can't, we're not going to match then? Are they going to stop that? No, they fucking won't stop it. They'll keep going to match. How are they going to protest? They could easily turn around and say, because they're the owners, and say, no more banners and flags. We don't want them. And tell the police and the security, don't, don't allow anyone in with banners and flags. Do you ever remember um, the flag yeah. with the uh, band, by the way, Daryl? Sorry, Frank? Was it the household disaster? No, 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 no. These are, they, they, these, are these owners here. I don't you know. remember why uh, when the FSG first came, they wanted they wanted to ban the flags and banners. Do you ever remember, Lee? Like, yeah, I remember that rubbish. Yeah. Do you know why? Oh, they said people couldn't see behind them or something. Yeah, that was the excuse, but yeah. the real reason. And I'll tell you what it was. It was like people, you know, iron planes. You ever remember the uh, X and Gillette? Mm. Uh, yeah, and they were saying X and Gillette out, you know, flying over. And they were coming out with long banners, weren't they, on the cock? Yeah. X and Gillette yanks out and all this. Mm. They were afraid of that in case anything went wrong. Yeah. That's what it was. They wanted them banned. You wanted the man. Well, you know. Do you remember think, that? I think football will get like that one day soon, you know, where they'll do away with banners anyway, like, because they won't want it in case anything anything awful is said on a banner, or they'll, they'll probably ban singing as well before too long, probably, like, in case anyone sings a naughty song that they don't like. Gomez's best position is on the bench. He's Tony Pebbles. Real Madrid last season. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, thank you, uh, Norman. Norman, thank you. As I said there, uh, Gomez's best position is out the door, bro. Pile of things he is. Early two goals next week, then it will be a game on, says TW. Yeah, you're right. 
I do I honestly, I really don't think for one moment that we'll play like we did. No. You know, I, as I said, I was watching uh, I was watching Liverpool play Barca, you know, the 4 0 game. But I was also watching when we played over there, we were the better side. But tonight, they were the better side because we allowed them to be the better side. That's the big difference, isn't it? Yeah. We allowed them and we allowed those goals. They were shocking goals. If if we can score, Frank, two goals in the first 30 minutes, they're going to shake. Surely. Yeah, if we could get early goals, like, but I mean, it's going to be really hard, isn't it? Jota, I, w I wouldn't start Nunes against Palace. I think Nunes needs to uh, be on the bench, like, against yeah. Palace. And probably so, in Italy as well. If Jota can find a little bit of uh, fitness, how long, mind you, he has been out a while, and he? That's, he's been out since um, Brentford away, wasn't he? It was Brentford away, wasn't it, when that guy landed on his bloody knee, wasn't it? Sheffield United away. It was, I think. Yeah, Sheffield United away at Bramwell Lane. No, it was... Um, no, um, Joss has been out since uh, Brentford. It was against Brentford that guy landed on his knee. Put it that way. Mm. But he is one of them players who can just come in cold and, and hit the net, isn't he, Joss? Well, he did it he did it tonight. And how long has he been out since February when he came on tonight? And then he got us a penalty when he went through. That was yeah. very unlucky as well. If he would have gone through there, he would have just hit it. He would have scored that goal that, uh, you know, the other fella missed. He would have put that away. If he would have been on the field and that was, he would have just rounded them and bang, goal. Empty. Starwin. And as Norman says, Yank South flags they did not like, absolutely they didn't. That's why. Yeah, the drunk says band singing. Wouldn't surprise me. Maybe maybe tonight while we were quiet, they didn't, you know, that, that was one of the protests. You just don't know. You thought about that. Yeah, I was surprised. It was a European night, the quarterfinal was a European night. I've never seen the fans that, that, like, low. And I've never seen Liverpool fans leave a game either, like they did tonight. I'll just say this, Colin, thanks. You know, because Colin says, was it a dictatorship tonight then, Frank, regarding the flags and banners, or did people have a choice but just decided to follow like sheep? I'll just say sheep. That's all I say in the matter. I agree. Yeah, look. Norman. Lee was was dead. Lee, Lee disappeared and came back as Superman Christopher Lee. With his <laughs> <laughs> where's, your, where's your blue suit? Lee, under your shirt. I know, yeah. Poor old Chris Lee fell off a horse, didn't he? And ended up there. Uh, like that, we want them struck them things in his mouth, didn't he? To talk or something. Yeah, he's a paraplegia. He was a horse jumper, wasn't he? He was a show jumper or something. Wasn't he, Chris? Reed? No, 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 no. He, he just liked, uh, yeah. He, he just liked. He wasn't a like a competitor. Yeah, he just yeah. liked going around an arena, you know, where there's fences like yeah. show jumpers. But and do you know what? What, what did him in when he came off the horse? So what his big mistake was? Oh. Holding on to the reins as he went over. Ah, right. And he went on as he went on, he hit him like that. Broke his neck. And that was it. Paraplegia. Ouch. Well that happened for me, didn't it? When I uh, fell, broke my neck. And uh, they said to me, uh, we can operate. I said, okay. They said it'll be uh, 80 20. I said, Yeah, just operate on me. So, anyway, he looked at me, the, new, the neuro, neurosurgeon, and said, uh, Do you understand what I'm saying? I said, Well, say it again then. 
He said, it'll be 20%. You'll be all right. 80%. You could end up like Superman, Christopher Reeve. <laughs> he said, can now, you walk? I said, yeah. He said, well, just walk. And now look at you. And now look at you. More beautiful than ever. But you know, he said to me, he says, you'll progressively go worse on your left hand side as you get older. And it's proven there. Uh, it's proven right. Because it, it is. It's terrible. Can't hardly walk, you know. Can't walk properly. What will SOS think of next? Not singing, you never walk alone in process for FC. Yeah. It says Norman and give give Lois Lane one. I bet uh, I bet you would Lee. Oh, so anyway, Norman. lads, we'll finish you there. Lee, don't forget the uh, Saturday morning film and TV. Yeah. Okay, sound. Yeah, I look forward to that, mate. Hey, I've been so, watching a lot. I've been taking a bit of time off. I've not been watching like the um, <clears throat> all the um, extra bits about. I've, I've watched the games, but I've been watching the extra stuff. Like I've been devoting my time to a lot of films. Like in the last few days, the last week, like I've watched a, a crap load of films. Like so, uh, not crap films, just a you know what I'm saying, a crap load of films. Yeah. Yeah. We wondered, we wondered where you was on Sunday, Lee. Think we frank. Yeah, do you know? Do you know what? Uh, uh, I watched uh, a, a film, film throw it on, and it was Super Eight. JJ Abrams. Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, cracking little film, really good little film. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. It was a good few oh, years. Oh, yeah, really yeah, like yeah, it's really good. I, I was watching one again uh, last night and I, I'm going to finish it off later on because we haven't got to be up early in the morning early in the morning early in the morning yeah, early in the morning oh, uh, what's the new film Frank at least watch Lebanese film again no I haven't watched any films I've not watched any <laughs> language films I've got a bit bored of them to be honest I've just been watching you know normal I've been watching action for I've been watching loads of different ones but they're all in the English language what I've been watching like got a bit tired of watching like foreign films well, I'm, I'm watching I've got to watch the other half um, and it's called Predator with um, with uh, Ian Bro is it Ian Brody not Ian Brody Oh, yeah, yeah, I know you. Adrian Brosey. Adrian, yes, thank mm. you. Mila Grazi. But, um, and it's good. Mm. It really is good. I love that one, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, I, I, I love them films, yeah. The Plank, that's brilliant. No wonder it, it must have cheered you up that, um, Scott. Scottish well, listen, listen to this. You know, uh, like the Scottish Bear saying that, Dr. Plank. There's a series, and I remember watching it years ago. American. And I was going through the streams, and I typed it in, and there it is. It came on. Brilliant. Dead funny. And it's, uh, it's called Dream On. Dream on, and it's about the fella, you know, like 30 something. So funny, it is. The divorced fella with a son, it's so fun. So funny. The Scottish Bear says, uh, Super 8 a brilliant film. It is a uh, Scottish Bear, yeah. And, uh, PW. Thanks, boys. Keep the faith. You know, back tonight, but we are still fighting. Still fighting for the silverware. You never walk alone, says TW. Thank you, TW. Thank you so much. Gene Ragman was an actor. Yes. 
I've still got it in me in my head and my heart that we will get the league, but it's gonna be it's gonna go right to the final day and there's gonna be twists and turns, isn't there? But, but I've still got it in my head and my heart that we will get there at the end. The showgun is brilliant, says the Scottish bear. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, uh, Scottish bear, you know, all right, you like a little, uh, you know, series and things. Uh, try and watch The Outsider with Jason Bateman. Watch it. I watched it back to back. I think there's eight or ten episodes. I watched it all day back to back. Brilliant. Do you know what, Frank? I might actually re-watch that because I watched it when it was on, you know, when it was first on, when it was new. Yeah. And it was so good. I'd watch that again, The Outsider. Well, you know what? I, I'm glad you said that. And I'll tell you for why. We'll actually discuss that. Not this week, but next week. You know, because it'll give you time to watch it. Um, it, it if you... Because I watched it, I, I watched it about six months ago, and I thought, oh yeah, and you forget things, if you know what I mean. You know where you think, oh yeah, you know, but you do forget things, so be well worth another watch. Mm. Well, scariest film you've ever seen, Frank, says Colin Zanks. There's a few of them. I hated, and I still do, the um, the Exorcist, and the Exorcist, believe it or not, as that William Friedkin said, the director, it wasn't made as a horror film; it's a thriller. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. It's true. It frightened me. That the Exorcist it wasn't a little girl; it was a little boy. It happened to. And he wasn't a Catholic like he was a Protestant or, or Baptist, whatever they bloody call them in America. But they had to get a Catholic priest in. And he was like, they tied his hands down to the bed and he managed to rip them off and start attacking the priest. And all. True story, it happened in Cottage City in Maryland, this happened. And then he had after it happened, he had no memory of it happened, happening. But he went on to work for NASA, this boy. That was the, the, the truth, because I seen the documentary saying where it came from, and then from that, William Peter Blatty wrote the book, and then three can make the film. But it, yeah, that really scares me being a Catholic. I don't know if Catholics get scared more than Protestants do, but that type of thing, possession, and that scares me. It was it was really horrible. That, mm. but I have I have watched some uh, horrors in my time. Where you know you go, whoa! I, I forget what I was watching there, Colin. Oh, the hills of eyes, Frank. Mm -hmm. They're horrible, yeah. They scare the they shit out of me. They, they are horrible, but and, and again through stories, I was watching something, and uh, oh, turns it off right away. I turns it off right away. It was I was about. 15, 12, 15 minutes into the into the thing, and you just see this couple, and uh, oh, you know, they're all lovey dovey and everything else. You know, the way you're getting used to characters, you know, the the, the interviews, you still feel all these little kisses and going, all made up <laughs> going into the you know, on a little holiday sort of thing. Okay, now they're just going through this, like. You know, like a wooded area, you know, the birds are singing. Lucelli Akadari, you know, the birds are singing. And you just see, it, it, it just covers over. And it goes very dark from the sun. And this particular place uh, where evil lurks, no one knows about it. Mm. And, you know, anyway, they go through and, and they're looking at it. Oh, it's dark. All of a sudden, is it going to rain or what? Oh, it started then. Fuck that. Up. It was really, it was horrible when you seen this thing. And that's a, that's a place, I forget where it is. And a, a captain went there with his crew to survive because they wanted to ship some island. 
And he said it was the scariest thing. This is in his, in his diary. It's the scariest thing he's ever seen. And, and he ended up in a lunatic. True story. He ended up in a lunatic asylum, this fella. Forget what it's called, though. Yeah, I like the the Thanks, Frank. I will do. That's the... Uh, I don't know whether it's uh, Dream On or uh, The Outsider. Have a look at the two of them, Dream On and The Outsider. You won't be disappointed. Yeah, I find, like, psychological horrors scarier than, you know, stuff where you see a lot of, um, like, I don't know, monsters or gore, and you see a lot, that type of stuff doesn't really scare me. What scares me is uh, psychological horrors where a lot of it's in yes. your mind. No, yeah. well, that's what that fucking thing is, mm. the exorcist. Mm. You know, you've got an image of that girl. Mm. She's only a child. And then you've got like, you know, these uh, these demons and evil things and whatever. And it happens. I seen one where uh, I was put turned that up as well, where uh, Anthony Hawkins. He was a priest. Yeah, yeah, I got that one. The right it's called. Yeah, no, fuck that. Yeah. yeah, I don't yeah. like anything like that. They frighten me, them pictures. The likes of uh, Darren frightens me, but you know, it's, uh, you know, and, yeah, I love Darren. See, oh, oh yeah, I love. Yeah, that was a scary one. That Scottish bear was well, yeah, the scary. Fat, bo fat boys yeah. have eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You, you remind me of a Beatles song. You know, Darren. What's that? I am the Eggman. <laughs> yeah, I thought the Omen films were scary as well. Oh, that's one. Yeah, Thirty Days a Night. That's brilliant. Scary. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Mm. Thirty Days of Night with Joshua. That's on uh, YouTube. You can get that on YouTube now. Can you? Yeah. Yeah, I was watching. I was watching. I was seeing it. I'll tell you the little thing, and you can get this on YouTube. It's a British film. It's a British film, and uh, it's called The Facility. I've seen that, I think. It's called The Facility, but it's British. Faculty, it's called, isn't it? No, The Facility. Oh, okay. It's The Facility. I, I know what you mean about The Faculty. That's the American yeah. Uh, thing. Yeah. But the facility is about um, people. You know the way you can go to these like cold places, fruit cake places, and you know you get a few bob. You know they do all experiments on you with drugs, give you the flu, and then they give you tablets to take to see if they work. Well, this was uh, the same. Not I don't know what it was, but it was uh, like. Uh, you know, they, they inject you with something, um, you know, then they, you wait to see what the, the reaction, then they, you know, they give you these other drugs to see what's the best. Like the anecdotes, isn't it, to be honest? Yeah. Like, what about Candy? Back candy Man, Lee. Anecdotes. Sorry? Uh, candy Man. Yeah, Candy yeah. Man. I've seen that candy a lot. Man. Yeah, it's a good film, yeah. Josh Hartnett stars in a great film. Yes, absolutely brilliant film. It really is a brilliant film. Unbelievable. Um, so that facility, and there's another British one, but it's not on YouTube. And it's called How. It's called How. Just H-O-W-L. How it's called. And it's about a tree. Really good. Hey, do you know what I mean? Honest to God, this is true, this. Yeah. Answer this. I've got to tell you. Do you know, I, um, I put, someone put a post up and I don't go on Facebook anymore. And what I seen was, uh, a picture of, you know, the Sopranos, you know, but the fellas, all the fellas, no women, you know, and you just see them standing there. 
You remember the TV series, The Sopranos? Yeah. Did you ever watch it? Bits. Oh, fuck off, bits. <laughs> you can't watch it. Jeez, how the fuck is it? Anyway, anyway, all right, when you're watching bits. Right, so I seen this picture and I was, and I pulled up and I went like that. Uh, it's the best TV series ever. Unfortunately, uh, and I put in James and in inverted commas. Uh, Tony Soprano, Galvatini, died and they were about to make a film and unfortunately Tony Sirocco, he passed, he's recently passed on. Nevertheless, the best series ever, exclamation marks. And, and besides it, I went to, uh, it's business. Because that's how they say business, you know, the New York it's business. Mm. And I put that in and get on to this. You know the way it like rings, you know, ding, like that. Ding. Ding. And, uh, it, it was uh, one of the stars I liked it. Michael Imperioli. He plays Christopher in it, the old fella. And then he messaged me. I couldn't believe it. He said, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is a fucking scam. Yeah, no, I it, wasn't. it wasn't. I went right into it. And I was chatting to him for ages. Goes after Mike Imperioli, like really goes after. Yeah, him. absolutely. He's, he's great. He's quite a few things, like, and he's always great. He's always good value for money, isn't he? I was throwing a few little, uh, you know, Italian bits into him. And he said, Are you an Italian? You know, like, have you got Italian background? I said, Yeah, it's given me mother's name. And, uh, you know, got my granddad and grandmother and aunties and uncles coming over, you know, from Italy. Unbelievable. That's brilliant. I'll tell you the good Italian horror that I love. Uh, the Dario Argento horror, Suspiria. It's a coven of witches and it, they're at a ballet. They run a ballet school. It sounds a bit daft, that, but it's not daft. Um, it's, it's a ballet school and all these young women go there, you know, to learn ballet and that, but it's run by a coven of witches and it's go. It's Quite gory, but it's it's just dead weird and freaky. And it's a brilliant oh, Brian. Uh, Brian. Hello, Brian. Sorry I couldn't make it tonight. However, I'm not the only one to show in Liverpool got films listed. All right, okay. Okay. Are you on it? Uh, it it's me, mate, Brian. It is a boys, it's only it's only Friday, boys. Film shows yeah. tomorrow night. He lives up. It's not tomorrow, mate. Tomorrow morning. But it's not tomorrow morning, it's Saturday morning. Yeah, today's Friday. For fuck's sake. <laughs> 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 you know what? No, <laughs> it's like what Ian McHale says. What bits, Daryl? <laughs> Don't say the last episode. Yeah, she's a bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fave gangster film Casino with Joe Pish. Joe Pish. That's how you pronounce his name, not Pesky, it's Pish. Pesky Salido. Yeah, it's a fish. That's, that's fish, Joe Fish, I call it. Because a Pish is a uh, fish. That's right, yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just agreeing with you. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Hello. Scottish bird, the Yama Aljavara, Peter Cushion. Yeah. Yeah. Listen there, Scottish bear. I know that you still watch films. Oh, what do you do? I'm sorry. I mean, you don't watch the TV, film and TV review. But have a look at The Last Voyage of the Dementor. D E M E. 
C-E-R Dementor. The Last Voyage of the Dementor. I tell you, Frank, and don't tell it, everyone to watch films because I'm the only one who watches them. No, they said they would. Do and they have watched them, right? Look, the yeah, House of Horror says the Scottish Bear, you know, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, and all the, yeah, look, yeah, all the lovely younger ladies. The lovely younger ladies. Yeah, no, um, yeah. Horror I do love is the thing, the John Carpenter one from 1980. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Star, star, Who's the main star? Uh, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, yeah. Davis, oh. Kurt Russell, Keith Davis. Uh, there's loads of actors. I like Wilfred Bramley, who played... Wilfred yeah, Bramley. great. The Doctor, wasn't he? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what is a good film. I'll tell you what is a good film. Arachnophobia. Yeah, very good. I like that. Great film. That's a very good film. Arachnophobia. You like that? All them spiders scare the shit out of me. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, I like that. I like that. You know, um, with Joe Pesci, when he gets that fella with the pen... That fella says something he doesn't like and he sets about him with that pen, doesn't he? He gets him in the neck. He just keeps hitting him in the neck with that pen. <laughs> and uh, the arms of the Baskervilles, especially with Cushing and Rick. Yeah, that was great, that. The arms of the Baskerville. That, it's the hounds of the ba I've read that, actually. And uh, no, when is Billy Cork? He'll come on. I thought he was ill, wasn't he? And Jason hasn't uh, caught up with him. He caught up with him. He said, listen, he said, uh, I will catch up with you. And uh, he said, OK, he said, I like Frank. I like coming on the show. So could be any time. I've got that fella who did the documentary on Monday, I think. Uh, uh, Tieran Friedman. You know, um, what's it called? Uh, Scouts, not English. He did the, you know, he, he phoned me up and he said, will you um, do this documentary I'm doing? I said, yeah, sure. So anyway, I, I didn't know the lad, you know. Oh, Frank, did you know about O.J. Simpson? What? O.J. Simpson. Yeah, I know. Yeah. A woman uh, uh, pinged me. And as you know, I don't go on faces. And what it was, it was O.J. Simpson died. Yeah. Rest in peace, he said. Yeah. Rest in fucking peace. And some fella underneath it went, oh, yeah, and, you know, showing all the prayer, the, the hand prayers, you know, where they do all this? Yeah. And I went, rest in peace. A double murderer. Murderer. I said, a double murderer. Who murdered his uh, wife? Murdered his wife and an innocent man. And you're saying, rest in peace, an armed robber. Yeah. What he went to jail for. He abused his wife for years violently. And you're saying, rest in F and peace. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And this other divvy, I said, you know, I did say divvy. Is he uh, going along with you? Oh, yeah, you know, some fella. And that's what I put, that's what I put in someone's comment earlier. Rest in peace, she, I think not, I said. But I said, uh, but she got back, she said, I didn't know nothing about it. I said, you know nothing about it? OJ. Orange juice. Oh, it's Jim Simpson. Yeah, the wicker man. Good, Gary. Love the wicker man. Scottish beer. I'll watch them all, Frank. Thanks, Scottish. Thanks, mate. Cold Fever is a good film. Gary Rigby, yeah. I've been telling people to watch Wind River. It's not a horror. But it's a true story. Watch it. It's brilliant, and if um, I, 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 have you watched? Was that your belly rumbling then? 
Ja. Wir haben eine schöne On Frozen Ground für Sion Kuschak. Und nur eine True Story. On Frozen Ground. Ja, ich habe noch das an. Fabulous. John Cusack and Nick Cage, really good. And uh, Ian McHale. Watch one with Frankie Howard and Ray Maland in the 70s called The Ocean Nightmare Path. Funny film. Well, it won't be with uh, Frankie Howard. Bloody hilarious, Frankie. I like Ray Maland, though. Ray Maland was a great actor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Sharon Stone. Sharon yeah, Stone, was she? Yeah. yeah. Filthy bitch. Yes. Yeah. Filthy little bitch. Are you all right? This is a very nice program. <laughs> I, swear, but I don't like things like that about women. Well, it was a good film, wasn't it? Like, you can't call it, um, call it that. It was a bloody role, wasn't it? Like, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Night guys, is uh, Scottish Bear. Thank you, uh, Scottish Bear. Thank Night Scottish. So well, morning Scottish. Disgrace what he got away with, OJ. Absolutely. Yeah. And on that note, thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk about some films again. On Saturday morning, and most probably, oh, I know. What night are we? Oh, it's Thursday, isn't it? And uh, most probably, we'll be talking football because I'm on there uh, Sunday night. Uh, I think it's at seven. I'm not quite too sure. We're having a post match. Yeah. Post match. Is that okay? So she is on a Saturday morning, right? So I'll make look forward to it. And uh, I'll see her on um, Sunday night as well, 7 o'clock. Well, Sunday evening. Is that all right? Brilliant, yeah. Uh, uh, look, I put that on tonight. Look. It's cracking that, isn't it? What is it? I can't make it out. Jesus. <laughs> oh blimey. No, come closer, Frank. Come closer. Ah, uh, Campiones. Okay. Camp Madrid. Madrid. Ah. Uh, remember, remember when we went to El Letico? Yeah. Remember on uh, the final. Get out. It's, it's awkward trying to do this. That's Campione, true. Madrid. See? And that's uh, Atletico's badge. But have you seen the uh, liver bears in the corner? Mm -hmm. See the way he's done it? Because we were there. Uh, yeah, nice, sir. Yeah. So I've got, you know, put that on because um, whether we get a double and one on, I don't know. And uh, the wrong arm of the law, very funny. Very funny. I like the normal wisdom films, you know. So daft. Grimshank, especially only with Mr. Grimshank. Mr. Grimshank. Mr. Grimshank. Mr. Grimshank. Oh, he's one of the kind, one of normal wisdom. He has a very, uh, he has a sad life there as a child. He was abandoned as a child, wasn't he? I think his uh, mum. He was abandoned. i I seen a documentary That's on him. Good. Yeah, I did. And, uh, did you see, no, did you see um, where a son and daughter-in-law took him to a, a home and, you know, he lived on the Isle of Man. Mm. And you see him and he comes in the house, you know, in the, in the house and he didn't know where he was going. And um, I couldn't believe it. It was on BBC. I remember watching it on BBC a few years ago. Yeah. And uh, he looked out and he went, Where's my car? Just like that. You know, this Rolls Royce he's had for years. He said, where's my car? 
and uh, the son said, oh, you can't drive anymore, Dad. He said, but where is it? He said, I like to sit in it. He said, no, you might, uh, you might have uh, drove off. He said, I wouldn't, I'd just sit in it every day. And uh, his daughter-in-law said, oh, shut up. Sit in it every day. You sit, in the, uh, you sit on the, the, the chair every day. You know, like pointing to a fucking armchair. Anyway, um, he said, anyway, we're taking you to uh, meet, meet new friends who love you. And he took them, they took him to an old people's home. And he sat there and he's talking to them. And later on, you know, it went on those pair of pricks, you know, as they left and they were talking, oh, well, it's, it's better off there. And he said, well, why did you sell the car? He said, because, you know, what's the use of it sitting on the driveway? They took over his fucking house sold his uh, car, sold all his uh, property and everything else and left him in an old people's home and he was crying. He said, Where's, where is he? You know, I want to go home now. Wouldn't you think these are wasters? Hey, they wouldn't have had to wait. How horrible is that? Doing that to his dad. <clears throat> Waited. It was a tear for yeah, for that documentary, what if Frank, you know, when you found out about like the way his father didn't want to know him and that like and, yeah. and he went away to sea, didn't he, and worked at sea and oh, God, it was really sad that documentary. It was horrible. I I said I was younger then, I said, Do you know what if I had to bump into him, I'd beat him up. Shouldn't say things like that, you know. But no, well, you don't mean you don't mean you're going to do it literally. Yeah. Like you feel no. that way, don't you? When you hear something so horrible, you think I don't give him a bloody slap. Black eye. If he would have been my brother, I would have done. Horrible man. Mm. And his daughter-in-law, she was worse, eh? Mm. Gary says, uh, I saw him on the Isle of Man once. Excellent. And uh, as uh, Anne says, uh, Norman says, horrible. And it was horrible. So, Lee, I'll see you on uh, Saturday morning. Yeah, see me Saturday morning. Sad. Daryl, I'll see you on Monday evening. Not Monday evening. Sunday evening, yeah. I'm gonna have a lie in tomorrow. You need to have a lie in. And I just want to thank all the people out there for joining us tonight. Thank you, it's been a, a bad night for us. Uh, but let's stay positive, eh, boys? Yeah, I'll call, I'll call you at 7 a.m. <laughs> I, got, I got a ring this morning. Sean rang me up and uh, dead early, woke me up. And he said, Nice fella, you know, he's a nice fella. And he said, Would you there put up something for us? You know, taxis, you know, you do all the taxis up with like streamers and balloons and things. And they bring kids, you know, to Southport. You do it every year. I said, of course I will. And then when, when the phone went, I went, fucking hell, couldn't you rang me before, you know, later on? But anyway, so I'm going to end now, lads, and I'll uh, see you all on, uh, you know, at the weekends anyway. The links are being sent out. And uh, don't forget to watch some things, or if you've watched them, we would chat about them on uh, Saturday morning, Ray. Right? Okay. Yeah, mate, sounds. We'll be done. Look forward to it. All right, mate. See you later. See you later, boys. Thanks, Daryl. Bye, guys. Oh. One and a half day. Ciao, Buffalo. <laughs>